is paid for by the tipping. You are listening to the tipping point show with your host, with your host, Mr. Just Ask Joe, John. Yeah. Right here on WLOU. Stream it live on Facebook and WLOUonline.com. And and now, The Tipping Point Show. All right, all right, all right. Welcome, welcome, welcome once again, good people, good family out there. All of the amazing people out there. Uh, We want to welcome you to yet another week, another episode of the Tipping Point Morning Show. And and actually, it's the last episode of the year for the Tipping Point Show. We'll be back, uh, I believe, in about three Saturdays from now. Uh, But as of right now, this is uh, this is it for the year. Uh, this is yours truly, Mr. Just Ask Joe, as well as my brother from another mother, my brethren. This is a dude that, man, just a, the deepest brother around, brother, esoteric concepts. John, yeah, how you doing, family? I am awesome, brother. Great intro. How about yourself? Oh, man, I am fantastic, brother. Um, feeling good, just another beautiful day, man, and and just 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 loving it, man. I'm trying to, um, I mean, just gratitude, bro, just gratitude, man, and and uh, I'm yo know, as much as I, I, I don't, I, I'm not a Scrooge, right? But this time of the year is just, it's just interesting for me, man. You know, I I, I have a uh, I have a a, a beautiful uh, nine-year-old son in Arizona, and um, you know I miss him to death, uh, or I miss him to life, and um, you know I've got my my twins here in uh, the Midwest here, you know, and and it's it's a tough time, uh, you know, having I guess you know the different households and and everybody being so spread out. It, it's a tough time. So it's one of those times where, you know, yeah, I, I grew up with the with the Santa Claus or, you know, I, I don't think I ever believed in Santa Claus per se, uh, but I grew up with the whole Christmas thing. Now, now I'm going to tell you something interesting about me. Now, when you say Christmas thing, I always got presents on New Year's. That's that's the way my parents did it. They did it New Year's. Now, originally they said it was because it was a religious thing. Um, but as I got older, I realized that my dad was just being, being, you know, he was trying to save money because, <laughs> yes, you know, that's right. be, having four boys, uh, and, uh, uh, you know, I'm, I'm 21 years younger than my father. So he, he had me at 21 and each of myself and my brothers are about three to four years apart. Right. So, um, you know, one from the other, right. And uh, with that in mind, I know he, as I got older, he was trying to save money uh, as far as getting gifts and we would get it. So I, my friends would be out after Christmas, you know, uh, with their gifts and remote control cars or whatever it was that they got playing with toys and stuff. And I tell them, you just wait, you just wait <laughs> <laughs> next Saturday, next weekend, next week. I'm coming. <laughs> I got some for y'all. <laughs> but, you know, nonetheless, this time of year is tough for me because, you know, I think about how commercialized it is. And, um, you know, if anything, you know, however you believe, I think this is a time of year to to focus on family, you know, focus on right. um, others in need. Uh, there are people out there that just don't have a, a fraction of what you have. So gratitude all day long, man. I'm just thankful. You know, if I got $3 in the pocket, I'm thankful for those $3, bro. If I got, you know, um, $1,000 in the pocket, I'm thankful for it. Just the same as those $3, brother. Um, yes, that's right. You know, it's just one of those things, man, where, you know, uh, I'm thankful. 
you know. Shalom to uh, Biz Buzz and, and, and shout out Grand Rising to uh, Frank Stoner, um, you know, always jumping up and uh, saying hello to us right away. So we appreciate that. Man, what's 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 on your mind, man? What's been going on this past week? I want to let everybody know um, real quick uh, that the, the the title of of this week's show is uh, interracial relationships. Does love have a color? All right, so so that's what we're gonna be talking about. But what's what's on your mind, man? Man, what's happening? Listen, it's been a great week for me, actually. Um, always and about this Christmas thing. Listen, uh, don't take it too personal uh, because actually, you know, we know that Christmas is designed for businesses. It's not really designed for people, right? You should actually feel like this every day about your child, about uh, your gift that you're giving. Giving is a great, great residual for the university. You give, you receive. It's, it's reciprocal. So you shouldn't wait till Christmas to give. However, um, in a business setting, when you're in a business, you look forward to Christmas. Why is that? And specifically in retail, because uh, you know you're looking to expand, you're looking to grow. Uh, so it's a part of it. So you know you you get in where you fit in, and you figure it out. I don't get emotional over it anymore. Uh, I do, uh, however. Uh, make sure that my grandbaby, because my daughter, now she's 28, be 29 next week. Matter of fact, she'll be 29 tomorrow. How about that, right? Wow. Shout out to her. But, um, you know, my grandbaby, so, you know, I just keep it real like I like I did my daughter. I kept it all the way real. Um, so we didn't do no celebrating or nothing like that. I just always kept it real. But, you know, I, I don't make a big deal out of it because if you make a big deal out of that one day, you have become ungrateful of the 364 days, right? Yeah. And you're eating every day. Every day you come home with a uh, with with a bag, uh, grocery bag. That's Christmas, man, you know. That man. is your Christmas. And so we we look at this thing backwards, and we got our emotions tied up in that. And it's very it's sad on two tips. Let me tell you something. Now, I grew up with it a slit a little bit. My parents didn't push that crap that hard. But let me tell you, my mother told me it was a Santa Claus. And I remember, and my father didn't play the game anyway. He didn't do none of that. So, but my mother told me it was a Santa Claus. And, 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 and let this sink in for you parents. Um, so, so my mom was telling me it was a Santa Claus. So guess who told me the truth? Guess who told me it wasn't a Santa Claus? It was some somebody my age or a little older and whispered in my ear, Man, there ain't no Santa Claus. And I said, you are a liar. My mama told me it isn't. You want to believe your mama, right? You, man, you going to fight for your mama's right, whatever she told you, right? Yep. And so I, I continue to say, you a liar. You know, my mama's telling me the truth. There is a sin. When you get a little older and you find out that that was a lie, it somehow makes you gravitate towards those who told you the truth, which is your peers, which can actually create a gap between you and the parent because the lie is hard. You'll never forget. Mama, you lied to me. You told me a lie. That's something a child would never forget. So thankfully, I, do, I don't practice the, the lie. I tell the truth. And uh, I, I at least allow my granddaughter, like I did my daughter, to appreciate every day that I go out and I make something happen. And that, that is should be thankful for. Like you said, $3 in your pocket. Be thankful for it. You don't have to wait till one time a year to be happy. You, you, you're right, man. And I, I think about that often. And that's, I think, another part that is, is somewhat tough because there seems to be sometimes it's added pressure, you know, to make sure that yeah. that everyone has something to unwrap. And and, and not just that, but but uh, just just you know picking out the right gifts. And I'm one of those people you know, especially when it comes to my loved ones, I, I like to give, give all year round, you know, um, and, and, you know, for my lady or what have you, I gift, give all year round. So I'm doing that all the time as a, as a, as a show of appreciation and, 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 and things of that nature. So Christmas time, it just seems this added pressure because people get so caught up in the commercialization of it. Um, you know, so sometimes it just, you know, it, I don't know, it just, it, it feels different and, but I love it though, yeah. because, uh, uh, 
you know, at the same time, I know the people around me closest, they're focused on, you know, just seeing smiles on families' faces, uh, opening something up. Uh, I think that's that's the joy of it for for some. And uh, and, and that's cool. That's cool. You know, as you can see those online, you can see I got a little Christmas tree in the background there. Um, you know, we, we, we do a little something, something, you know, with that. And I, I let people be who they want to be, you know, when it comes to that. So it's all That's good. Right. It's all good. But, uh, well, listen to this, though. Now, 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 check this out real quick before we jump into something you mentioned about. And it is true. Some people get go through depression around this time of year. And it's really unnecessary for that anxiety and that depression that you put on yourself. Because mm -hmm. uh, people should appreciate you anyway. However... I was reading a post that a good brother said, he said, if you're depressed and you're sad, he said, just think there's somebody, there's a rapper running around with the name Duty Low. And he said, if you just consider that, that somebody's walking around with the name Duty Low. And so when you, when you think about your name, you got a lot to be happy about. <laughs> there was a guy by the name, a rapper by the name of Old Dirty Bastard. I mean, if you're, that's not depressing, that's that thought alone that you're going to call yourself duty low, right? So, no, I had to look it up. I thought he was joking. I had to look it up. There is a rapper named Duty Low. Well, if that's now, the case, I don't then know. I would assume that there's probably a rapper running around named P.P. Uh, John, P.P. <laughs> P. P. Pinson, uh, you know, uh, I mean, that, you know, that's just crazy. I mean, you know, if you can think of it, it's probably out there. That's the truth of the matter. <laughs> yeah. That's hilarious. Um, so, you know, yeah, yet another thing to to be appreciative of as we uh, as we go into 2022. Um, but uh, yeah, so, you know, that's good stuff. Now, when you think about, um, you know, things going on uh, this year, recapping this year, any thoughts on your mind? Um, you know, I guess really this year seems to be, you know, 2020 and 2021 just seem to be one extremely long year meshed together. You know, anything from these last couple of years you want to recap before uh, hitting 2022? You know, there's a lot. And so, you know, I've always say that, you know, I, I get into, of course, the real new year is springtime. We all know that the, the real new year is when things blossom. This this new year is a business. This new year is for business, not for anything else. It's designed around how business make up their money and pay their taxes. Okay. Now, what I like to say is that I, I like to come into this new year, this new business year. But of course, more business. Of course, I want more revenue. Of course, I want to see people around me succeed. Uh, but I also want to go into this new year with less flaw. Uh, as I end this year, thanking everybody who who assist or who was on my team, uh, who was on my side, who supported me and spoke well of me. And I also want to want to end this year with apology for anyone that I may have offended, hurt, and I don't want them to carry that energy into the next year. Right. So you know. Um, I come into this year with new thoughts, new admirations of, of life, family, uh, and I. And so I'm. What I will say is this: um, you know, there's a new variant out. Of course, they're going to do this every year to you. And so oh, I, I would on, say, this on, is, if that, you're going to, what's the name of that new variant? It's, it's, it's it, hold on, we got to say it right, okay? We, get, we can't just say it normal. It has to be said. I'm a, it's it's Omicron. Yeah. <laughs> I think right? that's how they want it to name, be said. Right? They want it to be said, Omicron. Yeah. Well, <laughs> when it's reported the first case in Kentucky, uh, I think today or yesterday, I yeah. believe the first case of it in Kentucky. And, and I would say going into this year, here, uh, we really need to uh, upgrade. There's always ways to improve your health. There's always ways to get better and to be better. If you look at yourself, say, where can you improve? 
your health? Where can you where can you get better financially? So it's really about how can you be a better you, you know? Wake up the next day thinking how can you improve your health to somehow be a better you so that you can be a better person to the people that you are around. So I go into this year with that thought. Uh, I had a great year of 2021, awesome 2020. Uh, and so this is a great challenge, I would say. This is also the greatest time to be alive. Two challenges. As we all say, our parents died for certain rights that we have today. But think about it. If you don't stand up and fight today for your rights, guess how your children are going to live tomorrow? So so, so be willing to resist. Be willing to fight back. Don't fold so easily this 2022. Uh, be willing to stand up and go against the government. Be willing to resist, right, and fight back. And because what you do now is going to lay the groundwork for years to come for your children, children, children. And, 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 you know, and, and that is so important because I think people, they'll look at people like yourself, myself, that might say things like that, and they'll say, you know, are you fighting against the government? Because the government works for us. That is why. Because the government works for us. It's not the other way around. And people have forgotten that. They've forgotten. Yes. Grand Rising, Keisha Williams. Shout out to you, uh, love. Uh, let's see. When you when you look at that, people forget again. That, and see, people get mad at uh, what happened on, uh, you know, Capitol grounds and all that stuff in January when they stormed. You know, people get mad at that. But the reality is that. The government works for us. Now, when you go get into logistics, they have transformed things from we the people to we the government. You know, and 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 literally, um, when it comes to us, unfortunately, unfortunately, we're employees in a sense. Right. And, and America is a business. Right. Yeah. And, and, and so with regards to that, we've allowed that to happen, unfortunately. And I want to give a let everybody know if you got any questions or comments on anything we're talking about, folks. Don't be afraid. 502-776-1350. You call in, you speak on it. You know, we're going to respect you for speaking uh, your truth and uh, however that may be. But um, anything from 2021 that happened that you want to talk about uh, before 2022 gets here, then go ahead and call in 502-776-1350. All right. But uh, with that being said, you know, we were we were having conversations this week and such and, you know, talking about the topic of today's show and whatnot and and uh, came up with the the ideal um of uh uh interracial relationships does love have a color um i i got somebody messaging me right now telling me that they uh are looking to dial into the show uh here shortly so it looks like uh got somebody wants to speak on that topic um i i did it I'm, I'm gonna say this. I'm gonna say this. You know, just to speak. And I don't know. It, 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 Jay has. We don't have a caller, do we? I don't think so. All right. Um, with that being said, I grew up. You got your guest on the line. Okay. All right. Cool. Cool. That's uh, that's a uh, that's uh, absolutely caller calling in. Appreciate it. But uh, I'm I'm gonna speak on this real quick. I personally grew up with the belief that we should not intermingle. Uh, I felt that white people should date white people, black people should date black people. Being stuck in that ideal of, of a color construct uh, versus me as a man and, 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 and you know, a woman, uh, what, what have you, you know? Cause, cause that's, you know, I do believe that that's how I should be seen first is as a man, first and foremost. Um, not as a black man, but as a man. But I thought that that was my belief. 
that was what I believed. Um, my dad is the lightest brother you ever go run into or meet. And, um, you know, I could show you plenty of pictures of him with afros and such like that. And, and he dealt with, you know, racism growing up and such. So, um, you know, but every time he wakes up in the morning or, or looked in the mirror growing up, he saw a black man with afro. Or, you know, you get to them 70s, 80s with a perm. <laughs> I see some of them pictures too. Um, you know, but uh, now you you cut all his hair off. He's cut all his hair off. Um, and he can definitely pass for a white guy. Now, anyone who who's, you know, talking to him or what have you, they gonna know that that's a brother, all right? But yeah. um, it's interesting how that dynamic works because he's been in situations where he's got mistaken for white. Um, but with that being said, I, 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 I changed my view and I tried it at one point. And, um, you know, uh, I'm no longer in that relationship, uh, but I'll be honest, the fact that she was of another color um, was something that, that, that dealt with me. It was something that was the first time and, and, and that first time as a grown man ever dealing with a white woman. And it was something that dealt with me. Growing up, brothers would say all type of stuff. Oh man, you gotta try, you know, this, that, and the other. They they this, they that, you know, they wild, they, you know, you gotta do that. And I never did it. I got older, uh, grown man, uh, tried a relationship with someone that I became friends with first and tried a relationship with her and um it was cool and we 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 hammered it out for about two years uh but it wasn't easy and it dealt with me um i had to sit i, I even had to sit and have some counsel um because it dealt with me wow um it, it really did man and so, it, so let me let, let, let me ask you was it the was it the awareness around you that you became aware of what the people thought of you or was it something within you that just made you feel uncomfortable? You know what? I tell you what. Um, it was a little bit of all of that. And and let's bring in our guest um, who's on the line waiting, because I'm sure he can uh, uh, maybe speak uh, on some of this as well. Welcome to the Tipping Point Morning Show. Who is on the line with us today? Hey, good morning, man. This is Diego, brother. Hey, what's up, Diego, brother? Diego, how you doing, brother? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This is this this hey, is good a, morning. this is a this is a, a a family a tipping point morning show family guest right here. So, uh, <laughs> thanks for calling in, brother. <laughs> That's what's up. That's what's Thank up. you. Thank you. Thank you. So, have have you ever experienced um, you know, or, or an interracial relationship or anything you want to speak to as it pertains to that? What's your thoughts? Does love have a color? That's an interesting question, man. Before I get started, can you hear me? Pretty good? Yes, yeah. yes, we can hear you loud and clear. Okay, perfect. All right, that's a great question, man. I didn't tell you. That's a really great question. It's a very interesting question. But the answer is shorthand. I would say um, love truly doesn't have a color. I really think a lot of the things that deal with the parameters of love when people put colors or any other bias. I mean, they have their personal preference. I don't think anything's wrong with that, but I think a lot of it is kind of either taught or sometimes people just have fear of the unknown because, you know, everybody around them is doing certain things. You know, if you're black, typically a lot of people that's black, they black. And people that's white, typically they white and go on down the spectrum, Asian and everything else. But I don't think love has a color, man. I really don't. I think that it's about... Um, trying to be with someone that's going to really care about you and you care about them. I think you guys will be truly drawn to each other now. Being said, the difference in the colors in the United States can pose a problem if you're trying to date interracial. And I'm saying that because I've seen it, and of course I can also speak from experience. You know what I mean? Yep. Yes. Was there, was there any, was there pressure, what, did you feel pressure because of what you thought others thought of you? Uh, um, in my situation, I did not. Now, I grew up in New York, and I did grow up around a lot of people that did not date interracially, but um, uh, once I became a teenager, I started making friends in different groups, 
I think it, I felt a little bit more accepted if I dated outside of being black. But I did come across some people that that definitely, you know, treated me differently when I dated outside my race. And mostly in my specific situation, I had a lot more black people that would say stuff to me about it. You know, people that was kind of close to me, like a couple of relatives, a couple of female cousins, and one of my male uh, cousins, and then I had one or two friends who made fun about it. You know what I'm saying? Like, they joke with me about it. You know what I mean? But they would try to make me feel a certain way, and then they would, you know, you know, say things like, I, I just, it couldn't be me. I can't do it. You know what I mean? I can't do it. You know, they would do things like that. So, yeah. <laughs> you, you know, interestingly, I, I, I personally, in my experience, um, and shout out to uh, Phyllis Myers, shout out Vanessa Sigerman. Um, personally, in my experience, I didn't, um, my, the, the people around me closest to me and, and those in, in my community were very accepting of her. Um, there wasn't much issues there, but at the same time, she was one that, um, you know, she grew up somewhat rebellious with her family, her family, um, was racist, right? Her her uh, immediate oh. family was racist, and I mean she would tell you the same thing, and um, but she she grew up on both sides of the railroad track. She experienced um, growing up around going to school around uh, predominant um, melanated people, just as she had also grown up. Um, on a, in a very wealthy part of town, going to school around uh, predominant uh, European and experience wealth with her family, uh, being able to travel and, and go out the country growing up, things of that nature. So she, she, she had all dynamics. Um, her personally, she loved everybody. She loves everybody. So, you know, she wasn't, she was never the type. And she'll tell you, if you a racist person, don't, don't, don't come to her. Don't, don't be on her page. You know, none of that. Like she's like that. So she, I guess, you know, uh -huh. we call him an ally. <laughs> so she was that. Um, but me, I, I, I was the one who had more of an issue with it. And she knew it. She knew I was extra pro black, everything from day one. She loved me for who I was. Um, but I, I had a harder time with it, honestly. What was you going to say, John? I understand, man. Well, yeah, well, um, you know, some of the issues surrounding is what makes it uncomfortable is others. Now, what I would say is that a lot of times we talk about dating outside our race. And I've came over the years to realize that it's not a race that we date outside of, because we understand that there's only one race. But what we do is we date outside our culture. And that's, that's the and human race for someone, those that don't, uh, don't understand what uh, Brother John's talking about. Some of y'all, you know, you don't get yeah. it, but that's, that's the human race. That's what he's talking about, well, one race. <laughs> yeah. So, so what you're really talking about is dating outside your culture. And so what it is is it's an attraction to another culture and someone's attracted to your culture. Mm. Because when you get into the dynamics of the relationship, there's a whole lot of things that they have to learn. You know, a white woman or a white man would have to learn the black culture if you're going to marry into or date someone black. And there's something he's attracted to. Maybe he's attracted to the way she walks. Maybe he's attracted to the way uh, she, 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 she fries her hair or, or, or braids her hair. Maybe she's attracted to the way she eats. All these are culture differences, right? Maybe he's attracted to the way she dances, right? And it's the same vice versa. But I want to say this about uh, the relationship because it's very important. When you talk to black women, uh, it's very interesting. A lot of times the consciousness of where that a black woman will will have a disdain feelings towards seeing a black man with the black woman and probably vice versa. Hey. But where does that come from? Bro, I got a call. You, 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 I got a call from an ex when it was made public that I was dating a white woman. I got a call from a very pro black ex. Um, one who I uh, did, you know, uh, dated on and off for about four years, um, deep relationship, 
you know, families know each other, all that type stuff. She called me and she was lightweight mad, you know, and she was like, and her, 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 her thoughts were, Joe, in a time like this, you know, that's what, that's what she was saying. Now I want to, uh, at the same time, um, you got BizBuzz, Yahweh created 18 nations and 12 he chose as his special people above all the nations, the so-called whites created color slash race as a dividing system. Uh, I think we must distinguish the difference between interracial dating and interracial marriage. Go ahead, John, and then I want uh, Diego to chime in. Well, um, you know, when it comes to that, there is a there is a disdain feeling towards both sides, and what what happens is that blanket statements are made. Okay, so if you got a person, you got a guy that he he's really interested, or somehow he dates outside his race. Usually, it comes with if he makes it his preference. Usually, it comes with well, the black woman ain't this, well, the black woman ain't that, or a uh, black or the white woman treats me better. She doesn't give me a hard time. When we go into that, we make blanket statements as though all black women are the same, first of all, and all white women are the same. It's just the same for black women saying, hey, I would rather date a white man because you brothers, y'all this, y'all that. And then, again, another blanket statement. But I would say this, is that love is found anywhere. And you have one shot. You have one shot while you're in this dimension inside your body. And so if, 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 if you are searching for... Uh, love, you are searching for uh, support, and you put that vibration out there, the universe don't ask you, oh, you want a black woman? Uh, uh, it just sends you help. It doesn't, it, you say if you want to be loved, you want to be held, you want to be appreciated. The universe don't deal with color. That's mm-hmm. our stuff. The universe sends you exactly what it is you vibrate. And you can either accept it or not. But don't wait until, as those of you who believe in God, don't wait until you die and say, hey, God, you never sent me this. Says, yes, I did. I just sent it to you in this color and you didn't want it. So the point is, is that we get caught up. And, and for myself, for myself, I, I purposely and maybe by my default myself live with my default consciousness. And, and that's my fault that I live with the default consciousness because my mother at an early age told me, don't you bring no white girl home. I've told the mm. same thing to my daughter, don't you bring no white boy home, right? And so I understood that concept, but I can say it's a default because um, I love black women. I've always dated a black woman and it was all based upon what the default was that my mother told me, right? I get that. But as I grew older, as I began to look through, grew older, I stopped the blaming black men who had white women and calling them sellouts. I stopped the blaming black women who had white women as calling them sellouts. What I just began to realize is that's where they found love. And and everybody has this one time on this planet. Live the best life you can live. If someone loves you, don't turn down that love based upon the color of their skin. That's my point. If you found it, if the universe sent it to you, appreciate it and have some value in it. What you think about that, Diego? You know, it's kind of always hard to follow, brother. Yeah, he always gets deep, man. He <laughs> <laughs> always gets deep with the consciousness and he be so thoughtful in his, when he speaks. But I'm going to say, man, that default setting is a real deal thing, man. You know, my mother was a very, very unique lady in a way because she did do that same thing, right? She'd say, you know, whatever you bring home, my mother would say, don't bring no, you know, white girl home. But she also said, don't bring no, <laughs> don't bring no scallywag and no hood rat in the house either. You know, our mother was kind of funny like that. And my mother, people would see my mother. They see me, you know, I'm a caramel complexion, brother. I'm brown, but my mother is, like, highly, very, very bright, like, way brighter than, than Halle Berry. My mother's very light. People would think my mother was biracial, even though she's not. She came from two light skinned parents. But all of my mother's close friends would be white women, even though she told me not to bring white girls home. I, I never, my mother had, like, two black friends that had, like, ten white friends. She was a nurse, so it was funny to hear her logic behind it. But, unfortunately, I kind of didn't listen. I dated who I wanted to date. You know, I did date black women. I dated Filipino women in New York, Asian girls. I dated white girls. But I really blown her mind 
You ready, Brother John? Because I've been previously married. And my previous wife was a white woman. Mm. Mm. So imagine, imagine when I told my mother and my father that. They were like, what? You about to do what? <laughs> wow. So that was interesting. My mother really did not, was not appeased with that at first. But what's crazy is that I'm no longer married. You know, I'm divorced. And uh, there was a child that came out of it, which was my son. That changed my mother and my <laughs> My father and her parents, my, my, my ex-wife's parents, because it's like when the kid came out, when I had a son, now my mother and my ex-wife talk every single day. I, I'm not even married to that woman. I haven't been married to that woman in 10 years. My mother and her talk every single day. So my mother likes wow. her better than every woman I've dated. Ever since, <laughs> even after her, I've dated all kinds of women. I've dated a lot of sisters uh, the last 10 years. I've dated a good handful of black women. And my mother has not liked any of them better than the woman, even though she told me not to bring a white woman home. <laughs> he has not liked the other women better than her. And she did not like her at first. You know, my mother gave her a lot of problems when I first uh, began dating her. And then the difficulty, then the difficulty with what you were dealing with, mainly the other sides of the family. I mean, because you're dealing with two sides of the family, y'all in the middle. And it's very interesting. Yeah. At home, you at home with your wife, you at home, you shut you shut out all people's opinions, so it's just you and her. Does that become an issue? Like, for instance, if you're going over her house, if you're going over her parents' house, does that, did it kind of like say, oh, I got to go over and deal with this, deal with this? You know what I'm saying? Did that Was that kind of that thought all the time, and was that pressure to where you was just like, oh, do I want to go through this again? Uh, that's a good question. So the pressure, so let's say, you know, we were in a house and we would go over her family house is what you initially asked and the other pressures. So I would say, you know, she did have people in her family that would just, you know, look weird and stare sometimes because I don't think they want to, you know, to see people interact, intermingling or interracially dating. Um, they never really act funny toward me, but they would just, you know, you know, they would just look, you know, even like the little kids in her family, they would just, you know, you'd be somewhere, they'd look at you mm. or whatever. But, you know, after a while, people kind of get used to me. But it seemed like, I guess, they, after a while, became a step of me. I don't I don't know if they would do it again, her, her family in particular. <laughs> you know, even though she is remarried, and she's remarried to another black man. So that's mm. interesting. Mm. He and I talk about it a lot. <laughs> he and I talk when we talk. So we, well, I don't have a problem with him. He doesn't have a problem with me. Um, Great. Um, interestingly enough, the pressures, though, I, I never really felt pressures. So it, it's kind of weird. It's like I said, um, I guess I guess once my family would make little fun things, jokes when I was a teenager, and then after I was married and divorced, and I guess, I, like I said, I've dated, you know, black, white, otherwise. otherwise but I don't know. The pressures kind of left a long time ago. But I, I did initially certain things that was different about it, but um, uh, I don't know. I think the pressures will probably weigh up the average person now, but I, I think I've been able to overcome now, the pressures. I want to. Um, I'm sorry. I want to read a couple comments uh, offline as well. Um, Leonard Walker says, "I think we must distinguish the difference between interracial dating and interracial marriage." All right, so there's a thought there. Uh, we'll comment on this in a second. Mm -hmm. Vanessa Simagon, she says, there is a bunch of baggage that comes with melanated women. Now, that's a blanket statement mm -hmm. there, so something to think about, but it's coming from an experienced melanin woman. For She says, for her personally, there's nothing like my own, right? Um, BizBuzz <laughs> says, it's written that we... Uh, never were to mix outside our nation. There is no way to continue the essential melanin essence of your genes. That's how the dark brown got diluted into different shades of browns uh, that got created during slavery and today. Um, you know, and you know, what's interesting is, and, and I don't know, John, if you can kind of speak to this, but uh, in the traditional Bible, there is the story of Cain and Abel. And um, Uncle Mishorn actually points out something pretty interesting. Uh, 
and, and not many pastors talk about this, but the ideal of the serpent that um, supposedly uh, tempted Eve, he points out the ideal that that was another man in the Garden of Eden um, and that uh, basically what happened is that that man had sex with Eve. And that is where, uh, I guess, Cain came from, you know. So there, there's an interesting story within that, um, and, and Uncle Michon is, is best in telling it. But it's interesting when you start talking about that because, again, it was supposedly a mark. You know, Cain had a mark, which was his brown or darker skin color, right? Um, so if the ideal was that Adam and Eve were of melanated skin tones and then that uh you know i, I don't know whether the the serpent was, was 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 supposed to be you know of a lighter skin tone or what i don't know but uh either way it that kind of goes into start the start of creating shades and stuff like that way back when right um and it was the europeans uh, many 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 years later uh, well, specifically 401 years ago, going on 402 years ago, that created this whole race in doctrine, right? Um, black versus white, uh, the slave class versus the elites, right? That was what that was created for. But nonetheless, um, with those comments, uh, what do you think when you start talking the difference between interracial dating and interracial marriage? Let me say this, uh, and there's two subjects. It's a very good subject. Uh, this buzz, I want to, I would definitely want to touch on that. Uh, there is no difference between interracial dating and interracial marriage. There is no distinction. It's just no different than being married and what you, what you obligated yourself to, and how you make an obligated to date. You can make the same obligation in dating than you can in marriage, and in fact, uh, you can do it even better. So the, the, the thing about it is just because you didn't make a commitment, um, a marriage commitment doesn't mean it's less, that relationship is less because they're dating. You can still have the same respect and honor in dating a person you then, you can if, then you can if you're married a person. But let me address the one of the issues that you just talked about dealing with biblical writing. Let me put it this way. Um, you know, I have 100 trillion cells. Everyone has over 100 trillion cells in their body. And each of your cells are trying to are trying to live today, right now today, how you feed those cells, the enzymes that you feed them. So your cells don't care what color you are, number one. And I, I want to say this, is that if it is true that we were not, based upon biblical or God force, not supposed to mingle the, the universe itself, will 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 not allow you to do that. In other words, your child won't fail, right? Why would the universe allow us to mix and have children and share wealth if the universe never intended, whether you want to call it God or not, to mingle? The problem is this. Um, I would agree to one one notion that's definitely correct. The melanated code in black people is awesome. And in fact who doesn't want that melanin? Other people want to blend in with that melanin. And so even if I, even if you mix the, the, the darker race is still dominant. The problem is when you make these statements, think about those who were born and they, and they're, and they were mixed. Now they got, now they got to deal with this disdained attitude towards darker people and white people. Oh, and light people when they're both are part when they are part of both races. We never really think about the emotions of one must go through if they are a mulatto or a mixed person. See, this is what I'm saying, that we're all human. The mm -hmm. only thing you cannot do in this is is mix with your own family. And here's what I here's why I'm gonna end it. In Egyptian theology, I don't know if Maybe y'all don't know this, but did you know that some of the kings 
or the, the pharaoh, all the way back to the earliest dynasty, would have sex with their own daughter. Do you know why? To maintain to the same the bloodline. bloodline, the royal bloodline. Absolutely. And in fact, if you do any research, you'll find that some of their children was born deformed. Why is that? Because the universe is against it. If the universe was for us having sex with our children to maintain some bloodline, it would be okay and the child would come out okay. So exactly. we can become over success or over over protective of this thing that we call being black, so much so that it can cause us to have a disease like back then having sex with our own daughters. I think that was demonic. I don't know where it came from the concept, but I will tell you that sometimes you can be so caught up into something that you really miss the whole picture here of the whole human race being on this planet, on this one planet, trying to find a way to get along, regardless of who kicked it off. Hey, John. We're on this planet trying to find a way to survive. Absolutely, absolutely. Let's go to the caller real quick. Uh, if the caller is still on the line, on welcome the line. to the Tipping Point welcome Morning Show. Point. Hey, um, I'm. This is the uh, me, Sean. And I'm agree with Diablo when he says you gotta follow behind. Uh, you gotta follow behind uh, Don Yon because Don Yon take picked it up to a whole nother level and everything, which I'm totally in agreement with uh, in this uh, con conversation. Uh, being in the medical field and have experience, and being in the military, I too. Uh, experience the relationship of uh, have a relationship outside my culture. I, I'm not going to say race because it's, you know we only got one human race. Mm. But the one thing that I, John, y'all, you hit right on something that is very. I made an obligated choice uh, once I had this uh, relationship uh, with. I'm just going to say Teresa B in the military, and I literally, you know, I. Teresa B. loved us up to me, John, so much that she wanted to introduce me to her family. And I kept saying, Teresa, do you want to do that? Yeah, you want to do that, yeah. So she, we did it while she did it on the telephone. You know, she put me on the phone with her mother. And her mother, like, knew immediately I wasn't a white boy, okay? And so the mother put her father on the phone. And the father spoke to me and said, put my daughter on the phone. And I sat there and witnessed Teresa B. have an experience with her father that was painful. It was painful to experience and everything. And uh, after that incident took place and everything, and she hung up and everything, she, she, you know, she was committed to saying, and I, I made an obligation, brother. It's funny that you said what you said. I made an obligation. I still had a relationship with her. We still did, I think. But when I put her on that bus and sent her away back home, I never done it again. I decided I made an obligation that I didn't, I just was not prepared and ready to deal with that because she was really all in. But I just did not want to be involved in such a thing that I thought it, I just, I couldn't have it. I was in my 20s, 24. And I knew that I would never go that way again. So that's why I wanted to add that conversation in there. I made an obligation that sisters, I'm going to stay with mine. That's what I'm going to do. Plus, I'm, you know, pro, I'm pro up. So, uh, Don, you did, you hit on something. I just wanted to jump in there because you was obligated. I made an obligation, okay, that I was going to just kick it with us and do what I need to do to make things right with us. Take care, man. Hey, thank you, Uncle Misha. I appreciate you, uh, calling in there um you know so uh, many have had that experience and um real quick i need to make sure that we pay a couple bills so let me give a big shout out to healthdaddywild.net uh remember folks uh check them out healthdaddywild.net all month long if you go to the website and in the promo code you type in tipping T-I-P-P-I-N-G. You get 10% off all month long. All month long, healthdaddywild.net is giving you 10% off. Now, outside of the website, if in fact you walk into the store and say you heard it on the Tipping Point show, right? You'll get 10% off in store as well. 
So whether you order online or whether you walk in store, you let them know about the tipping point, then guess what? You will get 10% off of your order, right? So that's good stuff. Now, just, oh. remember, just the same, you've got godslivesmatter.com, all right? Check them out. That was Uncle Mishon right there. Uh, and he uh, works with godslivesmatter.com. And uh, you can go click their link, click the apparel link. You can grab the purple shirts. Um, great gifts if uh, you want to give them out as well. And you get yourself a free bracelet uh, just the same that you can wear saying God's lives matter. Remember that infinite value, that that passion within you, that universal uh, 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 direction there. That's God. That's God's lives matter dot com right there. Every life has infinite value. And just the same, folks, Sayababa.com. That's S-Y-A-B-A-B-A dot com. And uh, I tell you what, if you go to Sayababa.com, you're talking about literally the best. And then I'm going to say that the best incense that you can ever get your hands on. All right. They, 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 they don't just smell great. All right. They don't just have positive affirmations attached to them. They don't just just just, you know, look great as well. Folks, they were created great. And that's what's dope about them, folks. John won't let nobody in the warehouse to put their hands on his product if they're having a bad attitude. I promise you, it doesn't happen. You got to come in positive to even touch the product to put it together. So remember, folks, Sayababa.com, S-Y-A-B-A-B-A.com. They are in over 400 locations at a store near you. Um, and uh, here, here's a... Uh, uh, Leonard Walker, he says, marriage is more than an individual unification. It's a unification of families as well. Building families and uniting families is also synonymous with building wealth and preserving cultural identity. This is why interracial dating and marriage is such a serious topic, especially between people of African descent. Um, and uh, Vicky Latif Wayne, uh, shout out to you, sis. She says, I totally agree with Leonard Walker. What you think about that, guys? Real quick, we only got a few minutes. Awesome. Is uh, Diego still with us? I'm still on, brother. Gotcha. Okay. Hey, so what you think? So, so, um, uh, in in what in what the what uh, Leonard said? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, again, like I said, again, it's all in the mind of what you think the relationship is. Uh, and so I, I don't I don't know if a person who's not married can say that the person who is married has more feelings towards his partner than a person who's not married, or you know, vice versa. I've seen it go both ways. I've seen two people who are not married. And really have the relationship so damn packed you, you thought they were married. So it's all in an individual mindset. I, I'm not a I'm not a marriage certificate type of person, if that makes sense, right? So you know, I can get married. I can be married through my life partner without the ideal of going down getting the white government to say, "Hey, you're married." Interesting. Interesting. <laughs> now, uh, Vanessa. <laughs> Uh, Simagon says there is a movie called Something New that is about interracial relationships, conflicts, family, friends, a love story. Um, and uh, Vicky Latif, she asks a question. She says, why is the black man slash woman always quick to accept others but not accept their own? Now, that's, that's an interesting perspective and, and, you know, something to think about. That's a, that's a that's an after show talk. We are definitely will have that conversation. Absolutely, absolutely. All right. we'll, we'll have I'll to, join the after show. Yeah, we'll have to send you the link. I'll send you the link, uh, uh, Diego, and um, see if we can uh, make that happen as well. Um, look, Frank says, with respect, do the lions, tigers, and bears get married? <laughs> now, now. Are we talking different species at that point? <laughs> yeah. Are we still on the? Are we still on the human being issue? <laughs> so you know, 
know, I mean, I, I see what he's saying. You know, you don't see lions trying to mess with, uh, uh, you know, chickens. You know what I mean? Um, not in that sense, you know. Uh, they'll eat them, right? But, you know, a female cricket eats her mate after she has mates with them. So, I don't know. Maybe the lions eating the chickens is a form of uh, uh, mating. Who knows? But uh, uh, we're going to get... Why like they are Walker's the, the, coming the in as well is, on the after show, also. <laughs> okay. What well, one of the differences is when we talk about uh, uh, lions, tigers, and bears, there are different species in the bear family, and there are different species in the lion family, and there are different species in the tiger family. And so each and every one of those have their own creed or what to say, like we are in our different cultures. And each one behaves differently accordingly, right? And so, again, we're talking culture. We're not so much talking race. And that's the difference. If we were talking a lion and a tiger, that's a totally different, two different species. There are different tiger species. And the tiger species were made with each other. The lion, which is from a totally different demographic, a totally different uh, area of land. Uh, and there are different. There are there are albino lion, and you think the regular lions be like, oh, no, you albino, I don't want you. No, it's, it's a lion is a lion, and that's the way they view it. But again, I understand the concept and where we got this from. And, and that's why I'm saying is that if you look at the people who are born in this, in this double race, what about those? Are they black or are they white? In other words, what about the ones who are mulattoes? What side do they choose? Do they just stick with other mulattoes? <laughs> Can they not go to the white one? Can they not go to the black one? Hey, John. Hey, you know, we're going to have to get out of here because it is that time. Um, but but let me say yes, this, uh, 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 Leonard, um, Diego, I'm going to send it to you in uh, Messenger. Um, good stuff. Frank Stoner says you don't need a paper from the man to show love. Absolutely. Folks, if you want to uh, continue Absolutely. this conversation. You can check us out on YouTube at uh, the Tipping Point Morning Show. You can check us out on Facebook as we continue online with the conversation. We'll see you guys next year in about three Saturdays from now, right here, same place, same time, WLOU 104.7 FM, 1350 AM, as well as WLOUonline.com. And we will see you. Merry Christmas. Happy Kwanzaa. Uh, Happy New Year, all of that beautiful stuff. We are out. Peace. Over 70 years of serving the African American community. Give us a second, folks, as we regroup. Listening to the Tipping Point Show with your host, with your host, Mister Just Ask Joe, John Yeah, right here on WLOU. Stream it live on Facebook and WLOUonline.com. And now, and now, the Tipping Point Show. Right, good stuff. Good stuff. Um, we are back continuing the conversation. I believe that um, potentially Diego and Leonard, um, I've sent them both the link via uh, Messenger. And I, I'm, I'm noticing now that Leonard has seen it, so I'm sure he'll be joining us soon. Uh, he's been on the show as well um, plenty of times throughout uh, 
really these last couple of years as we transitioned um, from man up to the tipping point, um, all that good stuff. So he's been a part and, and, and Leonard Walker is history untold 400. So um, I, I think that there's a certain part that he's protecting with focusing on history. You know, that's his thing. Absolutely. Um, history untold 400.org. And uh, he's the, the, the president there and, and that's his thing. So, you know, with that being said, it's kind of interesting how that dynamic can work. Uh, you know, because you, you would really have to get uh, out or away from I feel like I don't, you know, I feel like you'd have to get out of the color construct to focus on, you know, being able to say, hey, date who you love. It 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 doesn't matter about, you know, as long as you're keeping it within uh proper age brackets and things of that nature, then you know. Date who you love, because, you know, there's some people out there. There's a movement. I don't know if anybody's familiar with this, but there's a movement trying to say uh, that pedophilia is OK. You can't control who you love. Um, <laughs> and yeah, that is yeah. that is that is absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, she um, I mean, uh, sister uh, Keisha Williams got a great question. Though. That was great. Yeah, question. I wanted to uh, I wanted to jump in there. She has uh, I have five young kings and three queens growing up interracial dating was just not a thing. Um, I, I could say the same thing myself. Uh, but as a mother, I believe as long as that person understands what comes with dating a black man slash woman, love who you love and vice versa. Awesome great, comment. There. Great point. Um, and uh, let's see. Uh, Vanessa Simagon, she says, culture and race is behavioral. Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, all right. And uh, let's see. We've got um, uh, Bizba. She says, facts. You'll never see animals mix outside their breed. They create their family and stay together forever. That, that's, that's, actually, that's actually not... I mean, in watching National Geographic and, and other stuff, lions, they, they you know... They protect theirs, but I mean, they bounce around. I mean, in in the animal kingdom, monogamy is not even the case. They they definitely don't stay with uh, their family together. Um, look at look at Uncle Michon, um, him and his dog matching. Both of them got gray beards. <laughs> hey, what's up, brothers? How y'all doing, man? Yeah, I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure that we are putting a clear vision. Or understanding when we compare animals to dating outside your culture again, hey, uh, John, y'all, you're right on it. Man. Not, I, I, I think we're doing. I think we, but I think we're confusing. Uh, uh, he, I think you we're confusing humanity with uh, uh, animals that are programmed based on instinct and everything. And humanity is built on our intelligence. Uh, John, you're absolutely right. I think we confuse what they do compared to what we do. I think that I think that when we make these we're, we're disingenuous, we're being very disingenuous uh, to the human race as a whole. Right, exactly. And, and I think if you look at if you look at the Korean people, if you go back in history, did you know where the Asians came from. They came from mixed race. Right. They came from blacks and whites, or or the Europeans and the Africans mixing. You 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 are you are not doing a service. You are doing a disservice to the plan of the Creator if you say that uh, we were supposed to only mix with our own race. If you make that statement, do you know what type of world we will be looking at? And in so many ways that we are here today 
And then we are we don't like what we are seeing today for something that happened way in the past. Well, guess what? That means that my hundred trillion cells are not living at its best because somehow I'm holding on to something that hey, it's I, all good, man. It's, it's the, it is the same as a person. Mute, mute him. It is okay. the same as the person that uh, is born and they and they have a white mother and a black father. What do you say to those when you make that statement? And that's what I'm talking about, because let me tell you something. There are people right now today who are born in a, in a mixed marriage or a mixed race. And, you know, they don't know what to choose. Do you know the suicide rate and, and, uh, and the depression that puts on people? People, not not mulattoes or not. These are human beings. Do you do you understand the pressure you put on them of not knowing? Well, that side don't like me because I'm too light. That side don't like me because I'm too dark because we're playing this racial game and we and we are actually dumbing down our intelligence when we do that. And here's why I'm saying that. Yes, you can maintain your 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 uh, family tree. You can maintain your blackness, your sperm, and, and, and I totally agree with all of that. But if one decides to cross over another culture, I'm not the one to point the finger and call them a sellout or they're wrong. That's where we that's where we get into that. Now, I, I like to I like to I like to answer that comment that Vicky put up. Um the one the the most recent or the, the one that she put up about. <laughs> the one she put up about the uh uh, uh, uh what black men let me see what oh she that? said uh I have to ask why is yeah. the black man slash woman always quick to accept others but not accept their own? You know, and, and, and that may I don't, I don't find that to be the case as much, honestly. No, that may be your lens of how you view it from the inside. Because remember now, everything you view on the outside is what you feel on the inside. And that may be a view from your perspective. But I really don't see that being in, in that area. I, I am aware of some cases, but I'm not going to make a blanket statement into that, that we won't accept our own. No, there are some that we really do accept our own. There are, like myself, just prefer black women. Women, not because I don't like white women or anything else. Maybe it's just because I have a, a, a high love for my mother. And, and, and maybe that's there. But that's a default I can live with. I'm OK with that. The point is that I'm not going to get into uh, giving anybody a label of those who they outside their culture. Notice I keep talking about culture because I don't believe there are many races. I just think that's something we were programmed and told. There's only one race. And so we're dating outside our culture. We're dating outside the way, uh, the way our, our lifestyles are and we're crossing over to another lifestyle. That's really it. Got you, got you. Now we now uh, uh, shout out to uh, Leonard Walker uh, that has joined, as well as um, uh, we got Health Daddy, uh, brother Frank Stoner. Shout out to you, uh, Frank Stoner. Got uh, got 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 the the sage burning and whatnot, um, which I'm, I'm sure he sells at uh, Health Daddy. Wow, y'all can check it out. Um, but, uh, you know, it, it's interesting, you know, when you start talking about this now. Now, Leonard, I, I, I want Leonard to chime in because, you know, Leonard is very protective of our history. All right. So he was the one who brought up the ideal of the, the you know, protecting uh, the culture. So, so Leonard, speak to some of this and, and give us your viewpoint, please, brother. Good morning. Good morning, gentlemen. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, I heard some clicking yes, sir. sounds. What's yes, the sir. clicking sound? I'm it, it's, it's me, Sean, and, and I, I got him muted a little bit. And <laughs> when he's ready to talk, he'll, he'll unmute and jump in. It's all good. All righty. All righty. Uh, good topic. Good topic. Um, first and foremost, let me say that um, it's good to see you all, brothers. You know, it makes it good to see everybody doing well. Uh, secondly, um, when it comes to this topic, um, first and foremost, me, myself, 
interracial dating, and I've been around the world, I've seen all different types of beautiful women of all different types, right? Yeah, you're, you're, you're ex-military too, right? Ex, yep, yep. I'm a veteran, so I've been around the world, seen plenty of beautiful women. Um, but for me, I, it was nothing that I even ever had to think about as far as, you know, being with another woman. It was my preference. I prefer to be with my own women, right? And it's and it's not even, I don't even have to think about it, right? It's just what trips my trigger, okay? So I think, you know, with some people at the end of the day, you know, we can talk, oh, you know, you're doing this, you're doing that, and so on. So it is a preference. People prefer what they prefer, right? People are turned and, and, on. But, by but what I, and on. I think it's I think it's important to point out, Leonard, just the same. I I believe that people prefer what they prefer. And that is a learned thing. Right. And it's based upon experience. I, exactly. Exactly. You learn that. Yeah. All right. But at the same time, so so what you prefer and, you know, it's like, you know, and I hate to use this kind of analogy, but it's, it's your same thing as your taste. You know, you go to the ice cream store and you say, OK, I'm going to try vanilla. I'm going to try chocolate. I'm going to try strawberry. I'm going to try, you know, this one, that one, so and so. My favorite ice cream is 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 uh, uh, pistachio. So I like that more than anything else. Why do I like it? I don't know. It's just what I prefer, right? So my point to that is on a personal level, you have a preference, okay? You have a preference of what you prefer and what you fall in love with and who you fall in love with, right? And there's nothing wrong with it. Whether there's something wrong with it or not, really there's nothing anybody can do about it because that's that person's freedom. That person is free to love who they want to love, right? So, you know, you could not like it, like it, whatever, doesn't matter because that's between that person and whomever they love, right? So, you know, that's not your business. But what you also have is the business of marriage, okay? In other countries, India, you know, Africa, different places where you have betrothals, all right? There is a business side to marriage. A lot of people say, well, marriage is just a piece of paper the government gives you. Yeah, but that piece of paper holds a whole lot of weight because what that does, okay, is it links families together. And if you have a wealthy family, let's say you have a family that's um, a family that has auto garages, right? And you have another family that produces car tires. They can link together and do business with each other. So, you know, because of this relationship between my daughter and your son, now we can grow our business together. This is what other people think of, right? So when they look at us, right, look at us as a people, they know that, okay, our history, you know, we are come from a slave class of people, right? And that's what they've relegated us to. Now, we don't have to stay that way, obviously, right? But when people, you know, look at, okay, somebody's man, a black man, black woman, okay, let's do inventory immediately, right? What is, who is this person? What is their family like? So and so, son, because, you know, all of that plays into it. So, you know, the family, the marriage dynamic all right, it's something we really have to kind of look at. You know, we can get beyond our feelings and get beyond, you know, people, oh, you know, you got to be this, you got to be that. And, you know, those are separate issues, right? But you also have to take in consideration, like I said, is building, felt, building wealth within a community, uh, reestablishing our family, okay? I think, you know, when you talk, when somebody prefers who they prefer, that's a completely separate topic. There's room for building families within the community and this person desiring to be with whoever they want to be with, right? So, so you know, it's, it's about focus. It's like me. I, w- I got plenty of friends who've married, dated, everything interracially. It was something I never did because it's something I never just thought about, right? It wasn't that I was against it. It was like, well, you know, I, I just like this this type of woman over here, right? And that's what trips my trigger. Not to say that I didn't see beautiful women all over the place. So no matter where I have been, I've always found a woman that was of my preference. Okay. So, and I think, you know, you know, like I said, it's you can agree, disagree, whatever. At the end of the day, use an individual. But still, like I said, is is you still have to think about that larger, you know, business side of marriage. And I think that's what we don't look at, is we don't look at the business side of marriage, you know, and, and you know, that's 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 my piece on that. Hey, Mishon, your phone, man, hey, is doing that thing. 
doing what? Like, like you sound like a robot. Like it's it's crackling and I like, say <laughs> hey, we need to we need to we need all of us need to send all of us are going to send a letter to Santa Claus on your behalf to get you a new phone. That's that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna write a letter to Santa Claus. I'm leaving some cookies out and I'm gonna ask Santa Claus to get you a new phone, be Sean. All right, all right, all right. Yeah, because we we can't even we can't even hear you. Are you AI technology? I'm on my I'm on my iPhone, but is is that is just my my voice sounding like that? Then I just get all off. Then I just wanna yeah yeah. It's not like you on an iPhone. That is yeah, funny. And, that yeah, is and funny. IPhone. IPhone. You might Say be tapped. No more. I'm not sure. Say no Ooh. more. It's an iPhone. Yeah. Oh, okay. But look at let can I can I. Yeah, go, go go ahead, go ahead. But listen, let me let me read this comment real quick. After what Leonard said, I hear what some. This is Vicky Vicky Wang. I hear what some are saying about loving who you love, but we live in a culture where it's almost impossible. As as uh, we as a people of color are constantly being marginalized as a people. If others would look at it in that way, it would be great. Right now right here across the nation they're trying to cross us out and our culture you know a, a, a few comments on that definitely um but let's 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 get it in because we got some other comments as well but but let's let's first start with what leonard said and who wants to chime in on that well you're talking about marriage and the and the rights to marriage i think that's another issue and of course uh whether you're married or not uh, there's a thing called a living will and so, you know, you can do the same thing with the with the living will when it comes to that issue. But however, uh, this this we're talking about the subject here of interracial marriage. And and so, again, um, what what I'm trying to express that I'm not hearing since we're into this discussion of white and black race, which is basically, again, dealing with different cultures. I, I, what I'm not hearing is what do any of you think about those who are born to interracial couples? What side do they choose? You, you, you understand what I'm saying? If, if you never talk to an interracial person about how they feel about race, you should. I guarantee you they have mixed feelings because they have love for the both sides inside their blood. So what do you say to those if you was to sell them, well, uh, black people ain't supposed to mix with black white people. And of course, white people ain't supposed to. When you say that and a person who's of mixed race, what do you say to them? Because that's kind of heartening. I can only imagine if I was if I was a mulatto and I had a white mother, black father, regardless. I would feel kind of like, what the hell? You know, shit. Well, where do I belong? Damn it. I can't go over there with them. I can't come over. You see, that's the difference. And Dude. Leonard said something very interesting about taste of food. Wow. That's a culture difference. The taste all of the, All the mulattoes got to get together and, and create, um, create, a dating, and create a dating app and create their own <laughs> so they just they just date with each other you know I, I, you know and that's interesting when you when you start talking about that because that does uh bring up that topic you know now you because at that point you start creating all type of uh races and classes and and everything you know all the pedophiles get together and you know they just date each other. You know what I mean? I mean, it's just, it, it opens the door for a lot of that, I guess. Uh, let's see. Joseph Reeves, he says, Act 17, one human race. Um, and, and Vicky Wayne says, by the way, I come from a mixed race. My grandparents were black uh, man and white woman. All right. Joseph Reeves once again comes back and he says, I don't like white women. Um, now, and, and, and I'm a, I'm a, I'm a dig in <laughs> a little bit there. Cause I'm thinking that he's saying, I don't like them as far as dating is concerned. I don't think he's saying that I don't like white women. Like he walks down the street, sees a white woman and he just like bucks at him or whatever, <clears throat> you know, like, every time you see, I think that he's saying, I don't like to date white women or I don't prefer them. Um, tried it once, but to be honest, whatever chance they had was killed out by lifetime and other uh, I, I guess the situations showing how vindictive and deadly they truly are. But see, that's going back to that blanket statement that John Yah spoke to earlier. You can't really give that because I know plenty 
um, that aren't. But I, I, I will mm-hmm. say that the one experience that I had, I feel that there was some vindictive and that there was some sneakiness that, uh, you know, I, 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 but again, that's perspective. That's one lens. Um, you know, uh, yeah, let me, let me not comment, by in let me large. Real quick. Go ahead. Go ahead. Let me comment real quick. Sorry to cut you off because my battery's getting kind of low and I want it's to. It's all good. And I know you got to store it. to run. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. The, th- the thing about Facebook and comments and when you send texts, we don't know what, you know, you kind of can ter- interpret it a certain way. Now, when I sent that, uh, do the lines of Tiger and Bears get married? I meant that as. Oh my. You don't need a paper from the man to go on with life, to uh, to uh, be successful in life, to love one another. Okay, oh. that's what I meant. I didn't mean. Oh, okay, you you weren't saying all, that bears and lions be meeting up somewhere, banging each other. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I, I'm saying is they 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 don't it, it's not it don't exist in nature. It don't exist yeah. in in real nature. Is what I'm saying. So well, hey, even even in the that, Bible, whenever they said he was with her, that meant somebody banged. <laughs> but right. you know, that's what the so, lions and tigers do. Go ahead. To that point, I wish to to be real, I wish we would stop talking about this race shit. You know, when we want to get into history and 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 go back to where we come from, why do we keep buying into this distraction? Why do we keep Dragging this, it, we didn't drug we didn't drug this shit into 2021, and I wish it would stop. I'm not a Crayola crayon. I'm not black. I'm not white. I'm not any of these silly little names people call themselves. So miss me with that bullshit, okay? I don't know where I come from. All I know is I exist. And that's cool mm. with me. Mm. And it's universal. So I'm cool. And it, all right. If, if, if you ever want to figure out if I guess if anybody ever wants to figure out if they're a Crayola crayon, just take your forehead and rub it on a piece of paper. See what comes off. I'm not none of that. So let me tell you this. Everything you've been told, who's listening to me right now, it's been a lie. And let me tell you something. This is therapeutic for me because I want to get this out. It's a fucking lie. Everything you've been told is a fucking lie. So quit thinking you know what the fuck you talking about. And I'm not sending this to any particular person. I'm just saying this out loud. Okay? Some people want to say this out loud. But I'm fortunate enough I'm on here to do this. I don't have much battery life, but what I'm saying, you don't know what you're talking about. You don't know where you come from. All you did is heard, read a book. You know, if it's if 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 it's Christ or Jesus or this or that, this or wherever it come from, that nature has no language. All right. It never who named this shit? Who named the sun? <laughs> Who named the moon? Who named this chick come from man? Oh, so, so, so people who think they got this shit right, I'm here to tell you, you're wrong. And as far as this race thing, in my business, what I do, all right, I know oregano works for well for everybody who's mm-hmm. not allergic to it. It don't matter if you black, so-called black, white, Chinese, Japanese. The universe don't give a fuck. <laughs> stop. <laughs> Please stop with this race shit. He, he demonstrates he, we can't move forward unless we get this paper from this motherfucker who, who don't respect you in his courts, in anything that he does, unless it benefits you. Okay? So I'm telling you, that's the way it is. You, you look at, hey. he, he don't care nothing about you until you can give him three points or a motherfucking touchdown. Okay, other than that, he don't care. He'd rather spend money on giving you a shot 
a shot. All this money, all the commercials, uh, the, the actual shot, uh, TV, uh, signage, everything, all this money being spent on this shot, and you don't even get a motherfucking reparation. Let's let's put together all the money that's been spent on this for the last couple of years, this thing that's going around, and let's uh, add that money up per person, per, per person, African-American people. They would rather do that than give you any money. All right, so uh, no. Marriage is not love. Love ain't even love. <laughs> hey, Tina so Turner. Who's, who's that? Tina Turner said, "What's love got to do with it?" What's love got to do with any of this shit? What race got to do with any of this? We're not gonna learn. We're not gonna move forward until we just move forward and forget about all this. I, no, don't get me wrong, because people gonna criticize me on the. Don't forget about the past. I don't. I don't want to forget about the past, but I don't want to keep dragging this. This people made up race. All right, it's made up. And I'm here to tell you that it don't matter in nature. Until we get that, it don't matter universal. Until we get that, that's the only way we're gonna move forward. I, I think I think you know my my little rant is done for now. And I appreciate hey, y'all listening. I, I felt up. like I felt like this was a a sermon. Like you know, <laughs> we just got Water. preached to, and 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 whatever garb you're wearing right now, just. <laughs> I, I can see you walking with a big giant stick <laughs> barefoot <laughs> barefoot through the desert, taking that stick to bang on a big rock and making water come out. I, I see it. <laughs> Speaking of water, water loves your body. You don't care what race you are. You can be any color in the world. You have to have water. You don't Folks, have to that, have is, water. that is coming from the church of yeah. health, daddy. Wow. I mean, I, 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 you know, we just we we're not gonna be successful, man. If we just keep the same stuff going from what we so called learn from the people who, you know, it, it's all for control. If I can jump That's in it. right quick, fellas, um, just to add to what Brother Frank Stoner was talking about, um, this conversation about race. Um, yes, it has to end, um, but we need to expose it to dispose of it. Because going into the future, you know, we, we cannot continue this type of path. But so what what is it, you know, with race? You know, why does it exist? Yeah, okay, people made it up, but why? Right? Well, you know, when you think about the it, divide, when, right? when, we think about, when we think about wealth and acquisition of wealth and resources, mm, bottom line that the bottom line is that the 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 elite class of those that control wealth and all of that will always be way, way smaller. The labor class will always be a much larger class of people than the elite, the military, the law enforcement, everybody with guns and bombs. The labor class will always be much, much larger and outnumber all of these groups of people, right? So what over here, and it, over time, what the, the elite classes realize in order for us, for us to hold on to this wealth and oppress people and do all of these types of things, it's it's going to take more than just us to have a royal guard or a military or something or somebody to, you know, keep these people down because we're not going to be able to do it. There's too many of them, right? So we need to create some sort of mechanism that we can create within them to cause division within them, right? So race was created to cause division among the labor classes, right? Plain and simple. It's just that that simple, right? So, 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 like I said, is is as long as these the labor classes are divided, you'll never have intelligent discourse or intelligent conversation, or know your rights, or exercise your rights, or hold people accountable for access to things that you can do for yourself to create your own success, right? That's that's yeah. what race is doing. Okay, it's making uh, oh well, this one is doing that. That's what, and then nobody is not, and, and everybody's guilty, right? So when you you know now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that we're not different as people. I mean that's kind of like going to a botanical garden and ignoring the fact that you got orchids and, and and carnations and roses and daisies and all. Yeah, they're all flowers, 
but they're all different and they're all beautiful in their own right. And to acknowledge, hey, that's a daisy, that's an orchid, that's that means I see you. Okay, so yeah, we see these people from this culture, that culture, that place, or this place, and this is what they do. That's you know, we acknowledge that and for certain and, and we can celebrate that. But at the end of the day, unity, all right, among the masses, people among the masses, poor white folks got more in common than poor black got got as much in common poor black folks than they do with rich white folks. But they you know Yeah, they, but 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 they, you, they won't you, see that though. You hard pressed. <laughs> you hard pressed to get I, I believe it. I, and I believe that's true, but you are hard pressed to get them all right. to realize that. But the you thing very is, hard pressed to get them all. Now here, real quick, Leonard, um uh love you to death. Uh, let me let me jump in. Um, Mar let's see, Marceline Yvette Taylor Coots. She says, usually I don't comment, but this is a topic close to me. I am a black woman married to a white man for over 20 years. I tried to stay within my black culture, but the brothers would not accept me. I was a successful sister, owned my own home and two vehicles. I met my husband through my culture, uh, church, right? Uh, we have a daughter. She had the opportunity to experience both cultures. She has learned to incorporate both cultures in her life. Uh, she started at Christian Academy and graduated from Central, all right? And let's see, let's see. Now, 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 while we were talking, uh, Biz Buzz or, or um, uh, let's see, this is, um, what's the sister's name? Trinita Maddox. She had sent me a link, and this might be the link that she sent in, in the comments here. But this link um, says something, it looks like it's coming from the Israelite, uh, the black Israelite community. Um, and it's a and, and it's and the topic is interracial marriage is a sin. Um, you know, <clears throat> I don't know what to say about the black Israelites. I'm, I'm going to say that uh, just as, <laughs> I'm going to say that as a blanket statement. I don't know what to say about them brothers, because I just see them, you know, in the street. They 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 I mean, just rattling and rattling and rattling. And it, it's, you know, I don't know, bro, that, you know. But but you know I, I can't speak to it. I can say this for myself personally. Um, I mean, and and I'm a light skinned brother. My mother was a brown skinned woman. Um, I didn't even like light skinned women growing up. You know, I had a thing with light skinned. I, you know, I I may have been very shallow, but you know, light skinned women. I you know I saw more of the back of the neck that, you know, was just real dark and it just scared me. I don't know what, it was weird, you know. Uh, but I didn't really like, like, as I got older, you know, it was, everybody was cool. It was like, you know, just, you know, beauty, beauty was beauty, right? Especially when booty is booty. Um, but with, with that in mind, I, I just, for me, you know, purple veins and stuff like that, that just, you know, that type of stuff just scares me. Um, so, so shallow, I'll, I'll say that, you know, growing up very much. So, um, Vicki Wayne, she says, I can, uh, let's see, my mom was biracial, but she always, uh, gravitated towards black men equaling her, right? Uh, during that time, fifties and sixties, she didn't seem to have to make a choice. Um, okay. And let's see, me Shore says, again, I sacrifice uh, for the sake of others. Um, he says, the color construct indoctrination and inferiority that began by the dominant majority, by the demographics, they who intentionally uh, created division to maintain dominant position uh, to control the weak minded. Yes, I agree. Um, and Bizbuzz says, I love us more each day. We are Israelites. I'm not an African American. The King James Version is our history book. Uh, read it for ourselves. Uh, Vanessa Simagon, um, children are accepted until they grow up. Mulattoes have been assigned the race as black. 
Uh, the color is the issue. I always thought everybody was whoever their daddy was. That's what I was told. Uh, historically, blacks even today separated their own by shades, darks, highlight, coffee color for superiority. It is horrible. Vicky Wayne comes back and says, the brother who is speaking now is talking straight to Leonard's point and mine. Um, clarity on, on who she's talking about, not sure. Um, so where does, Joseph Reeves says, so where does the extraterrestrial being come in considering the human is a race? Well, I would say that um, there is uh, another, uh, <laughs> there's other um, uh, beings out there. That's an alien being, <laughs> right? Uh, Michonne comes back and says, the brother ought to went to court with me or the brother who went to court with him this Thursday uh, because the legislation was based on color. Um, and hey, I guess, oh, Vicky, Vicky Wayne was probably talking about uh, health daddy. Amen, brother. Wow. Daddy. See that? The health daddy uh, named himself health daddy on purpose <laughs> because in short, women will always call him daddy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we, we have, Bizbuzz says we have to show that we are a nation on paper. Uh, let's file a lawsuit uh, for identity thieves kidnapping. Okay, all right. Kari Muhammad comes back and says, is the only natural difference between humans, melanin and culture? Mm -hmm. Oh man, listen, we, we, uh, that's something to think about. Um, what is, what is his website? Incredible. Incredible. All right, incredible.com, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, I want to make sure everybody knows and understands once again, incredible.com. That's Kari Muhammad right there. The brother's dope. Let me just tell you that. It's his creative cells are just amazing. Uh, Mishorn, uh, let's see, what do you say? Is the only natural difference between human melanin and culture? Hmm, that's, that's an interesting question, though. Is the only natural difference between humans, melanin, and culture? Lots of comments here. Uh, Michonne says the legislation and color created by the dominant majority was to box in the demographics of people who currently been in the most indoctrinated by it now 402 years now since Jamestown, Virginia, 1619 Bacon's Rebellion Rebellion. He's talking about the melanated community uh, that were brought here to America. Um, and uh, yes, he was talking about uh, Vicki Lane was talking about Leonard. Um, and Phyllis, Phyllis Myers, shout out to her. Appreciate you, sister. Many different black Israelite organizations, um, not all the same. OK. All right. Good. I'm glad to hear that because I, I don't know. And um, the ones that are in, in, in Louisville seem very similar, um, you know. But uh, uh, let's see. Don't hate or kill the messenger. The word is the truth when interpreted right. Hmm. Now that's I, I love that last statement when interpreted right, uh, because who who's right to interpret something mm. that was written like thousands of years ago that has been tampered with for thousands of years. Right. Men and their pride tampering with this uh, word. I mean, if you told me that there was a thousand year old man, two thousand year old man that had protected uh, this book. And he's he's alive and he was the last person to give it before it was printed. I think about it. But guess what? That book has been tampered with over and over. There are, are over 40. I think I looked it up over 4300 different languages that uh, the Bible and in, 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 in some way, some parts of the Bible in different parts of the Bible has been translated to, right? So it, it that is, that, I mean, I just, I look at men and it's pride and men knowing that a man would in in, in interpreting something want to uh, put their own lens on something, right? So so that's interesting. Lots of comments here, man. Good Lord. Um, hey, Diego, I got a question right. for you. Yeah, uh, yeah, go ahead. Now you heard, you've been listening to this and of course you just mm -hmm. mentioned that you, you have a son. And That's your right. son is biracial. That's correct. That's right. So now give me your thoughts on what you just heard when individuals are speaking about 
one race. You're only supposed to be with one race. Mm -hmm. And it's a sin to go to the other race. When you hear those statements, what do you think of your son? It's a good question, man. As the only registered interracially married brother on the panel right now. Let me speak. <laughs> Let me speak. You know what's funny is like, I mean, I want to shout out to my man, Leonard. I was in the military, too. And I travel the world and seen women all the colors and stuff like that. And cool. I with him. And the thing is, who cool, man, like you said, and, and like I got to say, brother, you know, like that brother that was just on from the X clan, he was getting loud and was telling everybody, you know, Leonard, my favorite color is pistachio too, as in green, as in green as in money, and as green as that diet Christmas tree and Joe background back there. But listen, <laughs> but let me get. <laughs> Yo, sir, let me get let me get real deep. Put these shades on. Let me get real deep. <laughs> Put your Malcolm X shade. I got you. Go ahead. Yeah, man, I, that brother that was from X Clan ain't, ain't as deep as me. You know what I mean? Man, grand verbalizer. What time is it? So, uh, listen. Let me say, man. Um, you know, I do have a son that's biracial. You know, I was married to a white woman. Like that sister. It was a sister said somehow she was married to a white man. She didn't feel accepted. I don't know. Maybe a little of that kind of slid with me too. But being accepted is important. So, Mister Yah, to answer your question. I think my son and I talk about this. You know, my son is a kid, but we talk about this. And my son, like a lot of people, I think that are biracial, I think they believe they have to step to the black side. I think black people make them feel like that too. And I think that sometimes their white family kind of make them feel like that too. You know, they, they, they're stuck in this middle where they're kind of not understanding where they fit in. But my son, uh, Totally wants to be on the black side. I think he feels like there's a loyalty thing that I have to do it. And I've seen this a lot because I've dated women who are biracial, right? I got biracial relatives in my family. Uh, and they kind of, I think most people who are biracial feel like they have to go to the black side. I feel like well, there's a narrative there that, that people push them toward it because I think they feel like I'm not black enough and I don't know if I'm white enough. You know, my white people see the, my white family see that I'm not the same exact color. But my black side of my family, you know, they make fun of me, make me feel like, you know, I'm down, but I'm not down. So my son and I do talk about this, but I think he feels like he have to go to the black side. Like he feels like, 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 like my brother Joe was saying, he's light skinned. My son's like way lighter than him. And my son, so far, the few girlfriends he's had, they all been, you know, super chocolate sisters because he feel like he have to. We talk about and, it. I'm, and and maybe if, do you think it's that he feels like he has to, or maybe that's what he relates to more? No, he we talk about it because I could get very okay. candid with right. my son. And of wow. course, he does. He does like, you know, beautiful black women. He does. Don't get me wrong, but he feel like it. Like he feel more comfortable and more. Like it, I, he feel uncomfortable if he's around black people and he he don't know if he's black enough. I feel like a lot of times a lot of the light skinned brothers do a lot of extra to prove they black. <laughs> to prove hey, they that, black that, that is you know, good point. Alpha Mix was a light skinned brother. You know what I'm saying? A lot of them light skinned brothers kind of they feel well, like they, they, they his, his nickname was his nickname was Red. Yeah. So yeah, you yeah. meet some of the hardest thugs that's light skinned. They got to prove they black. You know, and you know that's interesting. Being, yeah, I'm telling I've you. Been, I've been pro black, like I've been very, very pro black, and that 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 is interesting. And 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 we saw it in the movie School Days and stuff like that. I don't know if that's a, a thing or if that's just like something that has been embedded into us because that 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 came out from the movies where light skinned brothers was, you know, always being extra uh, extra pro black um, to compensate for their lack of melanin um you know but i mean i don't know do short brothers have big trucks all the time you know i don't know <laughs> same difference some, right there I think there's some signs there was some brother said somebody extra terrestrials on it you know if they got long hair brother and you got a number for me whoever that brother reads was, he was getting deep with some extra terrestrial things i'm trying to be funny but to be back to mr y'all i do talk to my son about this i got friends that are that are biracial like i said and we have these conversations and most often enough, I think they are always the big concern of trying to figure out where they fit. They seem to be more comfortable on the black side because. Uh, well, do you think that we as a people have been way more accepting of others throughout history than I mean, the other way around? 
I'm going to say, I was been, I was going to say that's part of it. I'm going to tell you the other part. The part of, you're right. Like, I mean, black people, we are accepting a lot. We, you know, we let people kind of come Sometimes in. Sometimes I think we'll to our We'll put our arm around people, you know what I'm saying? But the other piece is, too, with my son from talking to him and other <laughs> people I have that are close to me, relatives that are biracial, even dating women that are biracial. <clears throat> I think a lot of times when when black people are in rooms talking, they're always talking a, a quite often, not every time, but they're talking about fixing things or making something better or there's some oppressor against us. We're trying to, you know, overcome something. And a lot of times that make you feel like if you talk about that too, you feel like you fit in. Whereas, you know, if my son goes over and hang out with his wife's side of the family, they're talking just about, you know, simple stuff. Church and which tree we're going to figure out to put up for. They don't have so much of that going on they don't have as much as that and i can't speak for every white person i mean this is different but i'm saying even some of the women i've dated as biracial and they go if they are around their white family if they do it the white families you know they're talking about something silly like hey like you know we had a big debate in the house trying to discover def- decide if we want to put up certain cabinets whereas you know black people you know they're talking about you know get their rent paid and somebody's against us and you know, this this person at my job was tripping. So it's like you can kind of blend in if you kind of talk a little bit more about commiserating together. So my son feel that. My son is into hip hop. You know, he's a kid. He's into hip hop. And when I meet people, that's what hip hop is trying to do, uplift and talk about things like that. So it kind of it's like a it's interest like like me, like me. I'm a brother. And there was a woman early, like she said, she married a white guy. She didn't feel like she fit in. She, she said she was successful, did, doing some things fast. Now, I don't know if I can totally relate to that, but what I can relate to something she said there is like, even with me, like when I'm out talking, for example, when I talk, I'm, I like to talk about business, right? I really do. I like talking about travel right now. I'm not home. I'm traveling for the next 30 days. Quite often, I notice when I'm talking amongst people of every type of race, it doesn't matter if they're black, white, Latino, or whatever, I will definitely meet more people who are not black who do a lot more of the travel and business stuff than I do meeting people who are black. Black people will tell me, man, you lucky to be able to do what you do. When I'm talking to people of other groups, they're more like, hey, man, let's talk about the next quarter. Let's talk about what's next. So it's it's, 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 it's weird how sometimes the, the, the waves of those relationships. Now, like I said, this doesn't, this is a blank. This is not a, I'm blanking in everybody, but I'm saying I got brothers and sisters I know that we talk about and I do business with them. But what I'm saying is, it's like putting on different coats when I'm in different rooms, right? If I'm in a room with, you know, my, my own family, right? My own family, they're black. That's I got to talk about switching. different stuff, right? That's called code switching, brother. You get it. You get it. Yeah. And it's like, it's weird. When I was in the army and I would be traveling around the world, you know, when I would be talking to my family back in New York or some of my family that lived in Detroit, and my black family, they they like, oh, okay, you're doing cool stuff. And then if I'm talking to some friends of other groups, they'd be like, yeah, man, we're going to go with you, man, meet you in uh, whatever, you know, part of France. Let's go, you know, go Spelunkin in Tanzania. You know, let's go do stuff. It's like it's whole different types of things they talk about. Maybe maybe a lot more times, I guess, because we're black, we probably don't went through a lot more things. But as one man said earlier, when I've met poor people of any group, they got a lot more in common. And when I've met people who are affluent of your groups, they have a common. We don't know if it's a but, color thing, but I think it's a but I feel I feel like I feel like the affluent, the affluent and just, just to speak to that real quick, the affluent people, black, white, yellow, they seem to share and understand their commonality, whereas the poor people, black and white, seem to not share that, seem to feel that they are different. Uh, but then again, that would be a condition as to why they may be stricken with poverty right now. Look, we have a zillion comments. Let me read some more of these comments, guys, and uh, then we can we can we can jump back in. Michonne says, uh, let's see. It's now have more to uh, we now have more to gain I, I, with Michonne. Michonne has his own language. So you got to you got to got to understand his language. Right. So uh, we now have more to gain with the demographics of the dominant majority born specifically after uh, 1960 uh, to be in common with American descendants of slaves as born specifically after the year 1960s. Um, Let's see. Seed of our father. You're right, Joe. 
Uh, we are a compassionate people. That's biz buzz. Um, Frank Stoner says it's not about race. It's about control. And Frank, just so you know, we didn't kick you off. So if you you got if some happen sometimes uh, with with the stream, it'll it'll, you know, push off people. Sometimes um, you can jump back on at any point. Just 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 so you know. Um, let's see. Uh, I guess uh, you probably answered this, but uh, but what does he gravitate toward? Um, you answered that already, uh, uh, Diego. Um, and that was about your son. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> Who don't believe the black people are the first people and the black women can create all skin tones? OK, interesting thought there. Um, but. You know, with that in mind, then I guess the question is, does that matter? Because going back to the topic of the show, um, it was uh, interracial marriage. Does love have a color? And, you know, we kind of, in a sense, gravitated towards the idea that no, love does not have a color. Right. Um, let's see. What else we got? Uh, yes, we are more accepting. That's Vanessa. Um, and most black people code switch uh, very well. All right. Um, and, and I think that's something that in a sense. Is that something that we've kind of had to do? Um, is that a survival uh, mode? Is that a, is that a survival thing? Um, you know, code switching. No, it's a culture thing. We're going back mm. to culture again. So, you know, mm. let me let me mention something of what Diego was talking about, something that came to mind uh, when he was talking. So let's give you an example. Let's take pro-black people, put them in the same room. Mm -hmm. And there ain't no white people in that room. You hear the most deepest black talk. And <laughs> you will hear the most, the most, um, you know, to the white man's the devil, he's evil, he's no good, we need to come together, we need to. Now, when you make that statement, and let's say, for instance, somebody's in the room that has a white mother, that's a, that's a balance they got to fight with when you call the white man the devil, but yet they have a white mother. Exactly. What, what I'm trying to say is this, in, in a sense, um, you are operating from whatever your thoughts are, even mine, you're operating from a default memory. And so if you are a person who don't challenge your own thoughts, then you're stuck and you're right in your own belief system. And so what's happening is that as life progresses, meaning, meaning you can hold on to that past and assume whatever you want to assume, but that does not exist at this moment. How we got here is one thing. Us being here is another. And that's the most important thing we need to understand, being here. If I continue to hold on to what that past was given me, do you know at this moment I will remain in a depressive state? So here's what's happening. Whatever condition, whatever environment you're born in, that's based on how you move. If you were born poor and you were born with lack, Chances are that's how you move. You move with a lack concept. You, you move with a poor concept. Being black is a poor concept. It's not a high concept because here's why. If I ask you, give me the vibration of black, you can't give me nothing. You can only give me the ideal of the color. You can't tell me that being black unlocks the universe that grants you wealth, that grants you an abundance, right? And I'm talking about the key to the universe that everybody's got. White people can get it. Foreign people can get it. Everybody can get Even the aliens. universe. The universe don't give a damn about whether you're black or whether you're white. They will both have the same ability to achieve our greatness. It doesn't matter the color. That's my point. Mm -hmm. So so if I continue to hold on to that feeling, as I was talking about, you walk differently, I will be stuck. When you gain wealth in life, as Brother Diego was saying in a sense 
when you're around wealthy people, they're not talking this racism. They're not talking mm -hmm. this black talk. Mm -hmm. Man, they're talking a whole different mindset. And maybe mm -hmm. if you can't understand that, maybe you need to walk a little different. Because there are people out here, black people, and this is why poor black people will call a rich black person a sellout. Because they walk different. They're around mm -hmm. different people. They have a different mindset. They see a whole different abundance. And while you maintain your lack mindset, because you don't want to challenge yourself. And again, we operate under a default subconscious mind. Whatever it is you are programmed with, you believe to be true and you won't even challenge the notion. So if I don't care if you believe in some statement in the Bible, if you don't challenge that shit, you stuck. And the point is, is that life is so beyond what you quote in the past from a this thing mixed up ass book that is causing the division in the first place because here's why somebody's getting paid off the division somebody put the program out there for us to this for us to have this division and someone's getting money off of it yes i just made a look i looked at something that i did just yeah. this week i for the first time i've, I've invested in amazon and, and invested in um spotify when mm -hmm. i'm looking at the comments Black people and white people, ain't nobody talking about, well, black people this and black people that. No, we're talking green of how to move the scale. And I'm talking mm. to white people who are millionaires in this platform, and I'm talking to black people who are millionaires. And I better not come in those rooms talking that black talk. They'll look at me like I'm crazy because it's about, it's about achieving. What I'm trying to achieve has nothing to do with my color. What I'm trying to achieve is a generational wealth for my grandbaby, my great grandbaby. That's what I'm trying to achieve. And so the point is, is that if you are stuck in that default mindset, you need to challenge yourself. You need to challenge yourself and quit thinking that what you think is true. Don't don't believe everything you think is true. No, always challenge yourself, because every time you learn something new, the neurons in your brain switches and it changes. And it's not you're never going to be the same again if you read a new book you ain't never read before or if you walk with somebody that has an abundance of wealth, you will walk differently. You won't have the same mindset. And that's the real point. Only poor people, poor minds or poor minds, mm -hmm. they stuck on the race issue, pointing mm -hmm. the finger at other people while you can't get ahead. And, and, and we, we all know we all know how, how the poor got there. All right, so so we get it. Put in a position, put stuck in a position, right? But you you have to, in and in, in what John is saying, you have the ability to get out of that. And that is is a bigger issue. It's all about mindset. You have the ability to get out of that. You in challenging yourself, and I love what he said about that. Challenge yourself. Uh, because I think most of us don't challenge ourselves enough, but challenge yourself. Uh, even when you start talking about, uh, you know, 2000 year old books or stories and this, that, the other, um, you know, challenge yourself. Is it moving you forward? Is it moving you higher in every aspect of your life? Uh, from finances to relationships to everything? Is the, the way that you're thinking helping you vibrate higher? That would be the question to ask yourself. And if not, if the answer is no, if it's not, then guess what? Get rid of it. You know, because I, I see people, you know, I see people talking about stocks and 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 what they, they don't know and, and this, that, and the other. Whereas there's people, you know, right now that their wealth was created in the market. And it's simply because of a different understanding. Right. It's it's the idea that they they challenge themselves to to focus on getting that understanding, whether it be through a financial advisor, what have you. But, you know, the, the poor mindset will come back and say, oh, well, you know, nah, not going to do that. But that's 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 just a difference in understanding. Right. Um, but man, the, you know, poor John, man, you just... the poor mindset always think it's left behind. 
The poor mindset would say, look at you. You married a white woman. You you, you left me behind. That's the poor mindset. The poor <laughs> mindset always feels it's like it's left behind. And there they go. They way over there. That's the poor mindset. And not realizing that they can have the ability. And you can marry who you want to marry when you get there. And I'm not saying just because there's abundance out there that, that a person is going to switch and, and go to the other culture. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm trying to tell you is that the universe don't give a shit. While you down here on this low vibrational shit about this black shit, the universe don't give a shit because I see fucking everybody winning. And people yeah. winning no matter what color they are. They fucking out mm -hmm. here winning. Right. And we out here bullshitting, talking about race. Right. And right. they out here winning. And I'm seeing it. And I don't know if you're not seeing everybody winning. Maybe again, you need to walk. A little <laughs> you in the wrong room. <laughs> you need to move. You need to walk and move a little yeah. different and right. get around people who think a little different. Because here's the thing if you're not inspired by others to move your needle to a higher point, then at right there says a lot about you as an individual. Mm. Again, and, and it says a lot about the people around you. Right. Exactly. Right. Again, it doesn't matter what you quote from a from a biblical book. I think it's I think it's totally doing disservice to humanity to make the statement that that uh, black people are supposed to only do a certain thing that a book told you. Right. While what you're looking at in today's society is does not exist. So if yeah. this thing called God didn't want you to mingle then you need to question that Negro and ask that nigga, then why are people mingling and really getting over in life? You need to stop and ask that nigga, nigga, why are you allowing it? If you're going to say why it, you doing me? because why something you doing is so wrong, wrong with your mindset of you believing <laughs> in that bullshit in the first place. Right, right. I, guys, listen, I, I don't know if you guys know this parable or this story about the elephant. <clears throat> well, you know, you take an elephant as a, as a baby elephant and you drive a stake into the ground and you tie that elephant to that stake. You know, elephants as a baby elephants are strong, but they're not it's that strong. So they can't, you know, pull, you know, break away from the stake, the rope and the stake in the ground. But as that elephant gets to become an adult elephant, that elephant has the strength. But guess what? If you tie that elephant to a stake, he won't even try to loose himself or pull a stake out the ground or free himself because he has been conditioned, all right, to believe that I can't do this. I can't, mm. I, you know, oh, I'm tied to a stake. I can't, you know, even though you got the strength to, you know, you're a full grown elephant strongest. You know what? You know, see, so, yeah. so, 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 my, my point is, so what, what the brother's talking about, about the poor and the black mindset, what I've discovered is we are a people that are still stuck poor people mm -hmm. period i'm just gonna say poor people period right but especially us those who are descendants of slaves we are stuck on seeking social justice and acceptance rather than seeking prosperity black okay people are passionate this, about that black this people is, are passionate about that right right this is this Man, is this is what this is what the we want you to is. know that there is black uh, <laughs> right. so, we so, so, brother Leonard. Sorry about that. <laughs> so, so like I said, is 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 that's where we got to get ourselves. Is saying, listen, you know what? Is is now ancestry is important. I look back at my ancestors and I looked at some things. Is is I've got Irish ancestors, Native American ancestors, African ancestors. Okay, and many of them struggle. Right, I am a collection of everybody who has come before me. And those who have struggled to get me where I am, I'm at, there are two things that, 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 that drive me now. Going into 2022, 2022, I'm going to stop using the word truth, all right, because truth has been misused. The word we got to use now is freedom, all right, because we are free. I am free to make the choices. Nothing is holding me back from investing in GOGL, uh, hint, hint. OK, <laughs> so so nothing is holding me back from building the wealth that I need to build or doing what I need to do with my body to get myself in shape to, to do, do freedom. To, it's my freedom. If if person wants to date who they want to date, that's their freedom, not their truth. That's their freedom because they're free to do it. You could not like it. You could whatever. It, they're free. So if we want to celebrate freedom, OK, we, we want to celebrate we, freedom, we want to celebrate freedom. All right. 
okay, we have to start with ourselves. What am I free? You know, am I free to change my life? Am I free to do the things that I need to do to get where I need to go? And if if I don't know how to do it, then let me find a roadmap. There's so much information out here. The next thing that the next word I want to use is honor. Are we being honorable? Okay. When we talk about ancestors, am I honoring my ancestors through my successes, through the things that they've done and the sacrifices they made for me to get here? All right. No matter who they are, they could be Irish immigrants, they could be, uh, you know, Inuit Indians, they could be whoever, right? When you look back, people struggled back in the day. And when we look at ourselves, say, you know, we got more opportunity. We have more wealth, more this, more that, more education, more information, access to information and knowledge, okay, as far as how to do things and how to become successful in this world. Are we doing that? And if we're not doing that, why aren't we doing that? You know, so, so yeah, I, hey, I, hey I, I chime completely in with John. Hey, <laughs> hey, that's, hey, that's the message Leonard, right there. <laughs> but Leonard, Leonard, you know, we, 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 we throw things like, like you said, we we focus so much on we're passionate about the social justice stuff, right? Mm -hmm. You know, black power, black power, black power. I'm, I'm gonna tell y'all something. This 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 should make a lot of sense, but if you got to yell it out there to people mm -hmm. in order for them to get it, it probably ain't so. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you, you know, black, 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 yo, your black black power, your black power is gonna come with your black wealth. So if you start and, and so that, so exactly so so just be it be right. it mm -hmm. let that be the example just be it you don't got to get out there yell it protest it nothing just be it right. all right be it if each one focuses on being it guess what you have a whole block full and then that block full the other people on the other block start looking and saying oh oh they 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 being a black power and then they go start being it too. Right. So let, let's let we got to get away. But when it when I think about it, we're so contradictory because at the same time, we'll sit there and say we are these powerful, powerful uh, people. But then we we box ourselves in with saying we can't do this and we can't do that. We, right. We're not supposed to date this. We're not supposed to do that. Right. Really? It, Hold it, on. If you are if you are a powerful, uh, godly person, guess time, what? Yeah. you can do whatever the hell you want. Mm -hmm. Right. Hey, we, we're gonna come to a close here soon. Before but I, close, I wanna. I, I'm sorry. Before we close. Yeah, yeah. No, no. I'm gonna, I'm gonna let you. I'm gonna let. I'm gonna let everybody uh, uh, go around the panel. Um, uh, spit some of these comments out real quick. Um, a word that is not used. Uh, honor. Great word. Mm -hmm. Keisha Williams uh, says, "I've told my children to vet whomever they choose to be with, meaning know each other's mental status, mm. background, mm -hmm. what are their goals." What's their credit looking like? Yeah, and the list goes yeah. on. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> um, you should you should even know if you're getting serious with the person you do like me, you should know their boo boo habits as well. You know what I mean? Because you need to make sure that, uh, you know, they not about to die, you know, soon because they only boo boo once a week. You know, that's 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 bad right there. All right. We aren't doing that because we too worried about things that don't matter. Right. Mindset is powerful. Oh, oh. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Shout out, Miss Vanessa. So, in closing, Diego, go ahead and um and and spit it, and uh, yeah. we're gonna go around. And and as we go around, brother Leonard, I love you very much. Um, we want we we do want to end today. Yeah. All right, so <laughs> as as we go around, uh, uh, we're gonna go man, Diego. Man. We'll go, uh, yeah, go ahead, Diego. We'll spit it, so, then we'll go yeah, Leonard. I got to jump out here, man. I got to get on a plane. You know I fly a lot. I got to go to Belize in like yeah. four hours, yeah. man. Oh, man. That's great. Yeah. I just left the Bahamas, man. Oh, oh, and, and oh, and, and just, oh, and Diego, I want to remind you something, because me and John were talking about this the other day. Last time you was, not this last time, but the first time you was on the show, the what you say? You say calling up the admin and, and scheduling a dinner uh, with us, brothers, all right? And then this last time you was like, all right, we flying out somewhere. Hey, look. We, we need to make that happen. It's not going to happen outside the U.S. Until they get these I'm going to fly you guys with me to uh, Miami. Miami is my spot. I'm here today. I'm well, that's, that's, hey, that's, that's, that's literally, literally what I told John. Yeah, I said we should do Miami because um, because my, my peoples is out there. My pops, everybody's out there. Great, but great we can go around the world food. and we'll see all types of cultures in Miami. So absolutely. We'll eat seafood or we'll eat some Caribbean food, some rice and peas, man. 
That's all I'm hey. just trying to tell you. Now you're that my mirror that mirror that. Go ahead, go ahead. So okay, let me let me jump back in. Mr. Yah always get deep and he touched some things, but I'm about to penetrate even further a little bit. I'm about to get into this money thing and mindset real quick. So when it comes to interracial dating, what I have seen in my ability to date black women and date women that are not black, I've noticed this even amongst men who are of different races and men that are of my own race. All right. So for example, I've done very well successfully, right? Not to put my business out there, but be a little transparent. I have. I usually yes. make roughly it's not around that show, right? anywhere between ninety to hundred thousand dollars every month. I'm just throwing that out there. What I'm saying to you is I it took me 12, 13 years to build a business, make mistakes, work with my father and other men that was giving me guidance on building my own stock portfolios and things like that that I have put together. Right. And at a young age, I plan to retire in the next three to four years, just be a retired man, very young and living. I hope to have a wife personally. I would prefer to have a black wife, me personally. But what I have noticed when I have became more and more successful, even people that are close to me, family, relatives, friends of mine that are black, they, and black people in general that I've met, they kind of talk to me a little differently than people of other races. If I'm in other races, I've seen that people will say, oh, oh man, I'm glad I've seen your success. They might give me some praise. They might even say, hey, let's sit down and do business. Hey, I'm, I'm buying you lunch next week. Hey, if you're in town or hey, if you're in New York, let's do this, let's do that. But when I'm out and around my own people, they're more like, hey, anyway, man, hey, that's cool, that little thing you got going on, man. Hey, you know what, man, I've seen you doing your thing. Hey, when you gonna hook us up, man? You know, it's, always, it's always like that, like hook us up. And I've noticed, and I did an experiment, experiment with two sisters, two black women I dated. I took them all on trips. I took them on a trip in regular seating and on a, on, a, on conference seating that I took them once before. I'm just not at the same time, individually when I dated them. I flew one. Uh, I flew them both once each, first class with me somewhere, right out of the country, and then I flew them both private jet. And I wanted them to see the difference in how people treated me, if I was in either in the suit or if I was not, if I was flying business class or if I flew a private. And they would see like that race thing doesn't matter. People more looking at you for the green color, how they view you successfully. And I would notice even myself, and this is no dig against the sisters, because I prefer, even though I've been married before to a white woman, I've dated women of other races, I would prefer marrying a black woman personally and being married, even having some more kids and then passing on my wealth. What I have noticed when I have dated women that are of my own race, since we were talking about this race thing, they don't seem to meet me on that page of mindset not that they have to have money i know somebody said vetting people that's important i do vet it's more of i want them to want to work with me on this thing together and we have a vision we build but i notice a lot of times when i personally not every sister fits this category but they will kind of treat a brother who's doing very well kind of the same way they treat a brother they dated Five years ago, that might have been the manager at Popeyes. Whereas when I dated women from other groups, if you were successful, it's almost like they are looking at it like they don't want to mess up. Right? I'm not, I hate to say it like this. It's almost like they like, oh, you just woke up. Let me get you some slippers real quick, honey. Let me make sure I know you like, you know, mimosas in the morning or whatever. I have rarely had that experience dating sisters. Now, maybe I need to expand and get into more pools. I'm looking. Hey, what's up? Hook me up. But I've noticed that. I've noticed that. I've noticed it in my family, even relatives of mine. They're more like asking for money than they are like, hey man, cuz let me sit down with you, man. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me clear your calendar for an hour or two, man. Let me learn some things. Let me learn how to invest in stocks. Let me learn how to start my own business. Let me learn how to increase my you know skill sets that I can actually do something as a high. Uh, money activity skill set that I can use. They never hardly ever do that. Have I had brothers do that with me and sisters here? It's so rare. Whereas I can meet folks that are Asian. I uh, just hired a group of guys from India, 10 guys the other day to do some work for me. And they're just very intuitive to like putting a little bit more respect, understanding what I've achieved. And they want to join in and they see and share my vision and they want to push it and keep going further. They don't care about the color of my skin. 
for a whole lot less money an hour than they make in America. But I've seen a lot more of that. That's how I'm going to tie it into my experience of interracially dating. I'm not telling you women of other races are better than sisters. I personally, I don't think they look better. I can go by my experience or my treatment I've received. And that's no way of paintbrushing every sister. What I'm saying is, I, I'm telling you, I went through this and had this discussion with my last girlfriend over a year or something ago, me and her talk. And my mom wanted me to marry her. But we talk about things and we just never could be on the same vision level. It's more like she just kind of like had all these other things yeah. instead of coming together with me and understanding where we're trying to take it and how we can build something even greater than what I have if we would just get married and had kids. But it's almost like I felt like she and she admitted. I asked her, I said, hey, do you think black women can meet a successful black man who makes hundreds of thousand dollars or maybe makes seven figures or they meet a brother that just, you know, he's kicking ass and he's working hard as he can, but he may work at the mall. And and she told me, no, nah. she's like, well, I mean, treat you guys different for what? Mm. That's been my personal experience. I'm not telling you this is all sisters by far. I'm just going by my experience. And I'm saying the same thing with black men. When I've encountered black men, I'm like, they never really sit down. And it's like, just, just let me pick your brain, man. Let me, let me show you a little respect. Let me learn some things from you, right? It's more like, hook me up, man. Hmm. Hook a brother I, up, I, man. I, I think that's because of, you know, part of that is the microwave society that has been been embedded in our culture. You know, it's always the flash, the flash, the flash, show off the flash. So it's seeing the end result of all the hard work, you know? So people, we, we as a culture of people, that's what's been shown to us is simply the end result, but not all the hard work that led up to that success. And so in people's mindsets, I think they, it just gets embedded to where they, they that's all they focus on is, is the flash, the end result. So that's why they're not sitting down saying, hey, you know what? Show me the map. All right. So so all right. So uh, uh, who, Leonard, go ahead and, you know. Throw something at us real quick uh, as we jet out of here. I hear you. I hear you. Um, again, the word and the concept is freedom. Activate your freedom, people. Activate it because it's there and it's for you to activate. My next word is time. Take your time back. Okay? Take your time back. Right? Do the things that you love. All right. Be your, your time needs to be more about quant, quality rather than quantity. OK, do the things you love with the people you love. Right. And and life will be so much better. Right. And that's all I got to say. <laughs> I can't even believe that. But wow. That, there you go, brother. <laughs> I, I, I don't even believe that's all you got to say. <laughs> But that wasn't go black ahead, enough uh, for me, brother Leonard. <laughs> I just messed around. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I'm gonna let I'm gonna let uh, brother Yah have the last word. Um, you know, I'm gonna just say, you know, especially you know, as we're getting ready going to 2022, you know, like I said, in in my experience, um, you know, there was there was nothing wrong with her uh, as much as there was with me. I was. Uh, more of the shallow issue that had the the issue, the concern um, as it pertains to dating outside of the race, right? So um, that was that was me more than anything else. But with that in mind, um, you know, I, I do believe love doesn't have a color. Love who you you want as long as you're doing everything within, you know, uh, certain laws and stuff. You know, um, you know, you can't be loving five year olds if you're a grown person. Right. Um, that pedophilia stuff that is creeping. That's a whole nother show right there uh, because they're doing TED talks on that stuff, trying to say it's OK. But nonetheless, um, you know. Uh, just love has no color. I don't. I don't believe that. So I'm gonna just leave it at that. And uh, you know, uh, brother Yah, hey, go ahead, close this out. But brother, uh, brother Diego, hey, listen, you you said you was headed to Belize. Indeed, indeed, yeah. brother. Absolutely, um, a country that um, I've definitely had in mind to visit. Uh, actually, when I thought about looking to the relocating where I would relocate Belize was my first ideal because Belize uh, use U.S. currency. English is the second language. 
and they don't have no extradition with America. And I like that. Mm -hmm. Then someone told me about Costa Rica. Oh, and I fell in love with Costa Rica, specifically Playa Negra, uh, the Pacific side of the ocean, right? But there are some beautiful sisters in Belize, brothers. Yes. Awesome, but beautiful sisters. And they come with a different mindset. They come with a different culture mindset. Uh, I have a great friend that is uh, from Belize. She's here in Louisville. She travels back and forth. Um, great way the way she looks at her male counterpart. Uh, so, you know, I've met some women that are from Belize or from the islands, different type of mindset. Um, so, you know, as I as we go through this, as we get ready to go through this closing, I want to say, listen, this was a great show. Uh, please, everyone share, share, share. Ain't nothing like just pushing that button and sharing this on your news feed. Um, and 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 actually, uh, Joe, uh, we will be we still doing the um, uh, we still doing the online thing. And we even though we won't be on the radio. Yeah. But, yeah. And, and I was going to clear that up. We are still going to um, do some stuff online as well. Uh, Y'all remember, you go to the tipping point. Uh, radio show page on Facebook and you click videos and you'll see all of our, you know, video shows that we've done. You check us out on YouTube at the Tipping Point Morning Show. You'll see it. And uh, just the same on Spotify. You can find us the Tipping Point Show or Tipping Point Morning Show, something like that. You'll find us on Spotify as well. And um, yeah, we're, we're still going to be doing some online stuff. And, and, you know, Diego, you know, again, he was just on our show last week as we talked about success success uh, and millionaires and had a great conversation about sacrifice, creating gener generational wealth. So, um, you know, I, I know some of y'all probably still stuck on uh, some of the numbers he spit out, uh, uh, you know, 10 minutes ago. Um, but with that in mind, check out uh, the video from last week, which was a great show as well. Uh, just as this was. And, you know, you'll see some of that conversation about mentality as it pertains to the sacrifice of creating generational wealth. Um, but yeah, John, um, we're going to be doing it. OK, great. So well, as, I, as, as I close, I want to say that, you know, I came up in the 60s, so I came up with the Black Power Movement and all that good stuff. And I understand the blackness, the blackness, the blackness. But as I got as I got older, my mind switched my mindset switch uh, to a more hey, universal thinking, I like to call it. Uh, who, who's, uh, uh, to a more of a universal mindset um, to where I believe that everyone that is living in this dimension deserves respect and deserves the ability to, to achieve abundance as the universe does it, right? And so I remove my emotions concerning those things because those things are what is called triggers. In other words, if you talk about something black, it can be a trigger to you. And so because someone created that. So in a universal sense, I look at how the universe sees things. And so I ask myself, what do the universe think about this? And I need to have the same feelings as the universe because the universe ain't doing a damn thing concerning your emotions and feelings. The universe is only actually giving you whatever it is you put out there and you want. So I'm noticing this. This is, in, this is for everyone. The universe is not selective and saying, I'm going to give it to you more and give it to them. Now, so I don't see that. However, I do understand the melon code and, and the ability to heal and stay healed and live long based on your melon. So as I close, I want to say this. And of course, since I know we're going to be here next week and the week of New Year's, listen, take care of your health. It doesn't matter what skin color you are. Love yourself. Number one, love yourself. It doesn't matter what race you choose to love. Remember this, love yourself first. Because if you don't love yourself first, you can't give love. There is no such thing as love without first loving yourself. And so, yes, love does not have a color if you first learn to love yourself unconditionally without the color. Right. So understand that, that you are alive with 100 trillion cells in your body that needs live enzymes to stay alive, to keep you moving and shaking and grooving. Right. So enjoy yourself, enjoy your life and enjoy whoever you with that is making you happy. And that's why I close. Awesome. All right. So, you know, there you have it. 
we're, we're, we'll be back next week. And, um, you know, anxious to any of you brothers that want to uh, chime in. Uh, we'll, we'll touch base with you offline and talk about uh, next week's topic. I think, um, brother, I think, yeah, we probably going to go into that other topic. I think uh, Leonard would like the topic of socialism, communism and socialism. Which one is best to achieve greatness? Was it socialism, communism and, and capitalism? Capitalism. capitalism. Trust me. <laughs> and, and yeah. So. So, yeah, that's that's going to be next week's show. Socialism, communism and capitalism. Which one? is best uh so you know we'll talk about that and i know leonard has plenty of convo on that and um I, you know i would almost beg to say that probably every brother on here is uh, uh loves capitalism um but you know I, I i tend to look at the idea that uh we still are in somewhat of a socialist society but either way we will see you guys uh next week um as uh money is being made on the golf course and over dinner right uh socialism uh we'll see you guys next week just the same right here on the tipping point morning show peace, so brother uh, peace everyone safe out trip. there safe trip to you diego blessings and you and uh, joe call me three way after this man okay right, okay we will all right. You are listening to The Tipping Point Show with your host, with your host, Mr. Just Ask Joe, John Yeah. Right here on WLOU. Stream it live on Facebook and WLOUonline.com. And now, and now, The Tipping Point Show.